Third Nephi, chapters 9 through 13 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Third Nephi, chapters 9 through 13. Third Nephi, chapter 9. And it came to pass that there was a voice heard among all the inhabitants of the earth upon all the face of this land crying woe 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 unto this people woe unto the inhabitants of the whole earth except they shall repent for the devil laugheth and his angels rejoice because of the slain of the fair sons and daughters of my people and it is because of their iniquity and abominations that they are fallen behold that great city zarahemla have i burned with fire and the inhabitants thereof. And behold, that great city Moroni have I caused to be sunk in the depths of the sea, and the inhabitants thereof to be drowned. And behold, that great city Moronihah have I covered with earth, and the inhabitants thereof, to hide their iniquities and their abominations from before my face, that the blood of the prophets and the saints shall not come any more unto me against them. And behold, the city of Gilgal, have I caused to be sunk, and the inhabitants thereof to be buried up in the depths of the earth, yea, in the city of Onihah, and the inhabitants thereof, in the city of Mokum, and the inhabitants thereof, in the city of Jerusalem, and the inhabitants thereof, and waters have I caused to come up in the stead thereof to hide their wickedness and abominations from before my face, that the blood of the prophets and the saints shall not come up any more unto me against them. And behold the city Gadiandai, and the city of Gadiomna, and the city of Jacob, and the city of Gimgimno, all these have I caused to be sunk, and made hills and valleys in the places thereof, and the inhabitants thereof have I buried up in the depths of the earth, to hide their wickedness and abominations from before my face, that the blood of the prophets and the saints should not come up any more unto me against them. And behold, that great city, Jacobugath, which was inhabited by the people of King Jacob, have I caused to be burned with fire, because of their sins and their wickedness, which was above all the wickedness of the whole earth, because of their secret murders and combinations. For it was they that did destroy the peace of my people and the government of the land, therefore I did cause them to be burned, to destroy them from before my face that the blood of the prophets and the saints should not come up unto me any more against them. And behold the city of Laman, and the city of Josh, and the city of Gad, and the city of Kishkumen, have I caused to be burned with fire, and the inhabitants thereof, because of their wickedness, in casting out the prophets, and stoning those whom I did send to declare unto them concerning their wickedness and their abominations. And because they did cast them all out, that there were none righteous among them, I did send down fire and destroy them, that their wickedness and abominations might be hid from before my face, that the blood of the prophets and the saints whom I sent among them might not cry unto me from the ground against them. And many great destructions have I caused to come upon this land and upon this people because of their wickedness and their abominations. O oh, all ye that are spared, because ye were more righteous than they, will ye not now return unto me and repent of your sins, and be converted that I may heal you? Yea, verily I say unto you, if ye will come unto me, ye shall have eternal life. Behold, mine arm of mercy is extended towards you, and whosoever will come, him will I receive, and blessed are those who come unto me. Behold, I am Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I created the heavens and the earth and all things that in them are. I was with the Father from the beginning. I am in the Father, and the Father in me, and in me hath the Father glorified his name. I came unto my own, and my own received me not, and the scriptures concerning my coming are fulfilled. And as many as have received me, to them have I given to become the sons of God. And even so will I to as many as shall believe on my name. For behold, by me redemption cometh, and in me is the law of Moses fulfilled. I am the light and the life of the world. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And ye shall offer up unto me no more the shedding of blood. 
yea, your sacrifices and your burnt offerings shall be done away, for I will accept none of your sacrifices and your burnt offerings. And ye shall offer for a sacrifice unto me a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And whoso cometh unto me with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, him will I baptize with fire and with the Holy Ghost, even as the Lamanites, because of their faith in me at the time of their conversion, were baptized with fire and with the Holy Ghost, and they knew it not. Behold, I have come unto the world to bring redemption unto the world, to save the world from sin. Therefore, whoso repenteth and cometh unto me as a little child, him will I receive, for of such is the kingdom of God. Behold, for such I have laid down my life, and have taken it up again. Therefore repent, and come unto me, ye ends of the earth, and be saved. Third Nephi, chapter 10 And now, behold, it came to pass that all the people of the land did hear these sayings, and did witness of it. And after these sayings there was silence in the land for the space of many hours. For so great was the astonishment of the people that they did cease lamenting and howling for the loss of their kindred which had been slain. Therefore there was silence in all the land for the space of many hours. And it came to pass that there came a voice again unto the people. And all the people did hear and did witness of it, saying, O ye people of these great cities which have fallen, who are descendants of Jacob, yea, who are of the house of Israel, how oft have I gathered you, as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and have nourished you? And again, how oft would I have gathered you, as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings? Yea, O ye people of the house of Israel, who have fallen! Yea, O ye people of the house of Israel, ye that dwell at Jerusalem, as ye that have fallen! Yea, how oft would I have gathered you, as a hen gathereth her chickens! and ye would not. O ye house of Israel, whom I have spared, how oft will I gather you as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, if ye will repent and return unto me with full purpose of heart. But if not, O house of Israel, the places of your dwellings shall become desolate until the time of the fulfilling of the covenant to your fathers. And now it came to pass that after the people had heard these words, behold, they began to weep and howl again because of the loss of their kindred and friends. And it came to pass that thus did the three days pass away, and it was in the morning, and the darkness dispersed from off the face of the land, and the earth did cease to tremble, and the rocks did cease to rend, and the dreadful groanings did cease, and all the tumultuous noises did pass away. And the earth did cleave together again that it stood, and the mourning, and the weeping, and the wailing of the people who were spared alive did cease. And their mourning was turned into joy, and their lamentations into the praise and thanksgiving unto the Lord Jesus Christ their Redeemer. And thus far were the scriptures fulfilled which had been spoken by the prophets. And it was the more righteous part of the people who were saved. And it was they who received the prophets and stoned them not. And it was they who had not shed the blood of the saints who were spared. And they were spared and were not sunk and buried up in the earth, and they were not drowned in the depths of the sea, and they were not burned by fire. Neither were they fallen upon and crushed to death, and they were not carried away in the whirlwind, neither were they overpowered by the vapor of smoke and of darkness. And now whoso readeth, let him understand. He that hath the scriptures, let him search them, and see, and behold, if all these deaths and destructions by fire and by smoke and by tempests and by whirlwinds and by the opening of the earth to receive them, and all these things are not unto the fulfilling of the prophecies of many of the holy prophets. Behold, I say unto you, yea, many have testified of these things at the coming of Christ, and were slain because they testified of these things. Yea, the prophet Zenos did testify of these things, and also Zenoch spake concerning these things, because they testified particularly concerning us, who are the remnant of their seed. Behold, our father Jacob also testified concerning a remnant of the seed of Joseph. And behold, 
Are not we a remnant of the seed of Joseph? And these things which testify of us, are they not written upon the plates of brass which our father Lehi brought out of Jerusalem? And it came to pass that in the ending of the thirty and fourth year, behold, I will show unto you that the people of Nephi who were spared, and also those who had been called Lamanites, who had been spared, did have great favors shown unto them, and great blessings poured out upon their heads, insomuch that soon after the ascension of Christ into heaven, he did truly manifest himself unto them, showing his body unto them, and ministering unto them, and an account of his ministry shall be given hereafter. Therefore, for this time, I make an end of my sayings. Third Nephi, chapter 11 and now it came to pass that there were a great multitude gathered together of the people of nephi round about the temple which was in the land bountiful and they were marveling and wondering one with another and were showing one to another the great and marvelous change which had taken place and they were also conversing about this jesus christ of whom the sign had been given concerning his death and it came to pass that while they were thus conversing one with another they heard a voice as if it came out of heaven and they cast their eyes round about for they understood not the voice which they heard and it was not a harsh voice neither was it a loud voice nevertheless and notwithstanding it being a small voice it did pierce them that did hear to the centre insomuch that there was no part of their frame that it did not cause to quake yea it did pierce them to the very soul and did cause their hearts to burn. And it came to pass that again they heard the voice, and they understood it not. And again the third time they did hear the voice, and did open their ears to hear it. And their eyes were towards the sound thereof, and they did look steadfastly towards heaven from whence the sound came. And behold the third time they did understand the voice which they heard. And it said unto them, behold my beloved son in whom i am well pleased in whom i have glorified my name hear ye him and it came to pass as they understood they cast their eyes up again towards heaven and behold they saw a man descending out of heaven and he was clothed in a white robe and he came down and stood in the midst of them and the eyes of the whole multitude were turned upon him, and they durst not open their mouths, even one to another, and wist not what it meant, for they thought it was an angel that had appeared unto them. And it came to pass that he stretched forth his hand, and spake unto the people, saying, Behold, I am Jesus Christ, whom the prophets testified shall come into the world. And behold, I am the light and the life of the world, and I have drunk out of that bitter cup which the Father hath given me, and have glorified the Father and taken upon me the sins of the world, in the which I have suffered the will of the Father in all things from the beginning. And it came to pass that when Jesus had spoken these words, the whole multitude fell to the earth, for they remembered that it had been prophesied among them that christ should show himself unto them after his ascension into heaven and it came to pass that the lord spake unto them saying arise and come forth unto me that ye may thrust your hands into my side and also that ye may feel the prints of the nails in my hands and in my feet that ye may know that i am the god of israel and the god of the whole earth and have been slain for the sins of the world and it came to pass that the multitude went forth and thrust their hands into his side, and did feel the prints of the nails in his hands and in his feet. And this they did do, going forth one by one, until they had all gone forth, and did see with their eyes, and did feel with their hands, and did know of a surety, and did bear record that it was he of whom it was written by the prophets that should come. And when they had all gone forth and had witnessed for themselves, they did cry out with one accord, saying, Hosanna! Blessed be the name of the Most High God! And they did fall down at the feet of Jesus, and did worship him. And it came to pass that he spake unto Nephi, for Nephi was among the multitude, and he commanded him that he should come forth. 
And Nephi arose and went forth, and bowed himself before the Lord, and did kiss his feet. And the Lord commanded him that he should arise, and he arose and stood before him. And the Lord said unto him, I give unto you power, that ye shall baptize this people when I am again ascended into heaven. And again the Lord called others and said unto them likewise, and he gave unto them power to baptize. And he said unto them, On this wise shall ye baptize, and there shall be no disputations among you. Verily I say unto you, that whoso repenteth of his sins through your words, and desireth to be baptized in my name, on this wise shall ye baptize them. Behold, ye shall go down and stand in the water, and in my name shall ye baptize them. And now, behold, these are the words which ye shall say, calling them by name, saying, Having authority given me of Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And then shall ye immerse them in the water, and come forth again out of the water. And after this manner shall ye baptize in my name. For behold, verily I say unto you, that the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost are one, and I am in the Father, and the Father in me, and the Father and I are one. And according as I have commanded you, thus shall ye baptize, and there shall be no disputations among you as there have hitherto been, neither shall there be disputations among you concerning the points of my doctrine as there have hitherto been. For verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hath the spirit of contention is not of me, but is of the devil, who is the father of contention, and he stirreth up the hearts of men to contend with anger one with another. Behold, this is not my doctrine, to stir up the hearts of men with anger one against another, but this is my doctrine, that such things should be done away. Behold, verily, verily, I say unto you, I will declare unto you my doctrine, and this is my doctrine, and it is the doctrine which the Father hath given unto me. And I bear record of the Father, and the Father beareth record of me, and the Holy Ghost beareth record of the Father and me. And I bear record that the Father commandeth all men everywhere to repent and believe in me. And whoso believeth in me and is baptized, the same shall be saved, and they are they who shall inherit the kingdom of God. And whoso believeth not in me, and is not baptized, shall be damned. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that this is my doctrine, and I bear record of it from the Father. And whoso believeth in me, believeth in the Father also. And unto him will the Father bear record of me, for he will visit him with fire, and with the Holy Ghost. And thus will the Father bear record of me, and the Holy Ghost will bear record unto him of the Father and me. For the Father and I and the Holy Ghost are one. And again I say unto you, ye must repent, and become as a little child, and be baptized in my name, or ye can in no wise receive these things. And again I say unto you, ye must repent, and be baptized in my name, and become as a little child, or ye can in no wise inherit the kingdom of God. Verily, verily, I say unto you that this is my doctrine, and whoso buildeth upon this buildeth upon my rock, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against them. And whoso shall declare more or less than this, and establish it for my doctrine, the same cometh of evil, and is not built upon my rock, but he buildeth upon a sandy foundation, and the gates of hell stand open to receive such when the floods come and the winds beat upon them. Therefore go forth unto this people, and declare the words which I have spoken unto the ends of the earth. Third Nephi, chapter 12 And it came to pass that when Jesus had spoken these words unto Nephi, and to those who had been called, now the number of them who had been called and received power and authority to baptize was twelve. And behold, he stretched forth his hand unto the multitude and cried unto them, saying, 
Blessed are ye if ye shall give heed unto the words of these twelve whom I have chosen from among you to minister unto you, and to be your servants. And unto them I have given power, that they may baptize you with water. And after that ye are baptized with water, behold, I will baptize you with fire, and with the Holy Ghost. Therefore blessed are ye if ye shall believe in me and be baptized. After that ye have seen me and know that I am. And again, more blessed are they who shall believe in your words, because that ye shall testify that ye have seen me, and that ye know that I am. Yea, blessed are they who shall believe in your words, and come down into the depths of humility, and be baptized. For they shall be visited with fire, and with the Holy Ghost, and shall receive a remission of their sins. Yea, blessed are the poor in spirit who come unto me, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And again, blessed are all they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And blessed are all they who do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. And blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And blessed are all the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And blessed are all the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And blessed are all they who are persecuted for my name's sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. For ye shall have great joy and be exceedingly glad, for great shall be your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets who were before you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I give unto you, to be the salt of the earth. But if the salt shall lose its savour, wherewith shall the earth be salted? The salt shall be thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out, and to be trodden under foot of men. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I give unto you, to be the light of this people. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Behold, do men light a candle and put it under a bushel? Nay, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light to all that are in the house. Therefore let your light so shine before this people, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, One jot nor tittle hath not passed away from the law, but in me it hath all been fulfilled. And behold, I have given you the law and the commandments of my Father, that ye shall believe in me, and that ye shall repent of your sins, and come unto me with a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Behold, ye have the commandments before you, and the law is fulfilled. Therefore come unto me, and be ye saved. For verily I say unto you, that except ye shall keep my commandments, which I have commanded you at this time, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, and it is also written before you, that thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment of God. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother shall be in danger of his judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council, and whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Therefore, if ye shall come unto me, or shall desire to come unto me, and rememberest that thy brother hast aught against thee, Go thy way unto thy brother, and first be reconciled to thy brother, and then come unto me with full purpose of heart, and I will receive you. Agree with thine adversary quickly, while thou art in the way with him, lest at any time he shall get thee, and thou shalt be cast into prison. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Thou shalt by no means come out thence until thou hast paid the uttermost senine, and while ye are in prison, can ye pay even one senine? Verily, verily, I say unto you, Nay. Behold, it is written by them of old time, that thou shalt not commit adultery. 
But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery already in his heart. Behold, I give unto you a commandment, that ye suffer none of these things to enter into your heart. For it is better that ye should deny yourselves of these things, wherein ye will take up your cross, than that ye should be cast into hell. It hath been written, that whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. And whoso shall marry her who is divorced, committeth adultery. And again it is written, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But verily, verily, I say unto you, Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair black or white. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever cometh of more than these is evil. And behold, it is written, An eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, that ye shall not resist evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not away. And behold, it is written also, that thou shalt love thy neighbor, and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them who despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father who is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. Therefore those things which were of old time, which were under the law, in me are all fulfilled. Old things are done away, and all things have become new. Therefore I would that ye should be perfect, even as I, or your Father who is in heaven, is perfect. Third Nephi, chapter 13. Verily, verily, I say, that I would that ye should do alms unto the poor. But take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father who is in heaven. Therefore, when ye shall do your alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as will hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father who seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not do as the hypocrites, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father who is in secret, and thy father who seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner therefore pray ye, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for ever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head, and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father who is in secret. 
and thy father who seeth in secret shall reward thee openly lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and thieves break through and steal but to lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal for where your treasure is there will your heart be also the light of the body is the eye if therefore thine eye be single thy whole body shall be full of light but if thine eye be evil thy whole body shall be full of darkness if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness how great is that darkness no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other ye cannot serve god and mammon and now it came to pass that when jesus had spoken these words he looked upon the twelve whom he had chosen and said unto them remember the words which i have spoken for behold ye are they whom i have chosen to minister unto this people therefore i say unto you take no thought for your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink nor yet for your body what ye shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment behold the fowls of the air for they sow not neither do they reap nor gather into barns yet your heavenly father feedeth them are ye not much better than they which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature and why take ye thought for raiment consider the lilies of the field how they grow they toil not neither do they spin and yet i say unto you that even solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these wherefore if god so clothes the grass of the field which to-day is and to-morrow is cast into the oven even so will he clothe you if ye are not of little faith therefore take no thought saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed for your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all these things but seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you take therefore no thought for the morrow for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself sufficient is the day unto the evil thereof end of third nephi chapters nine through thirteen recording by jared hess in mapleton utah please visit at hesmas.blogspot.com third nephi chapters fourteen through seventeen of the book of mormon this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org Recording by Jared Hess The Book of Mormon Translated by Joseph Smith Third Nephi Chapters 14-17 through 17. Third Nephi Chapter 14 And now it came to pass, that when Jesus had spoken these words, he turned again to the multitude, and had opened his mouth unto them again, saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Judge not, that ye be not judged, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged, and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, first cast the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast the mote out of thy brother's eye give not that which is holy unto the dogs neither cast ye your pearls before swine lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you ask and it shall be given unto you seek and ye shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you for every one that asketh receiveth and he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you who, if his son ask bread, will give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? 
if ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more shall your father who is in heaven give good things to them that ask him therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you do ye even so to them for this is the law and the prophets enter ye in at the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way which leadeth to destruction and many there be who go in thereat because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ravening wolves ye shall know them by their fruits do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit neither a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them not every one that saith unto me lord lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father who is in heaven many will say to me in that day lord lord have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works and then will i profess unto them i never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity therefore whoso heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them i will liken him unto a wise man who built his house upon a rock and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock and every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man who built his house upon the sand and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it third nephi chapter fifteen and now it came to pass that when jesus had ended these sayings he cast his eyes round about on the multitude and said unto them behold ye have heard the things which i taught before i ascended to my father therefore whoso remembereth these sayings of mine and doeth them him will i raise up at the last day and it came to pass that when jesus had said these words he perceived that there were some among them who marveled and wondered what he would concerning the law of moses for they understood not the saying that old things had passed away and that all things had become new and he said unto them marvel not that i said unto you that old things had passed away and that all things had become new behold i say unto you that the law is fulfilled that was given unto moses behold i am he that gave the law and i am he who covenanted with my people israel therefore the law in me is fulfilled for i have come to fulfill the law therefore it hath an end behold i do not destroy the prophets for as many as have not been fulfilled in me verily i say unto you shall all be fulfilled and because i said unto you that old things have passed away i do not destroy that which hath been spoken concerning things which are to come for behold the covenant which i have made with my people is not all fulfilled but the law which was given unto moses hath an end in me behold i am the law and the light look unto me and endure to the end and ye shall live for unto him that endureth to the end will i give eternal life behold i have given unto you the commandments therefore keep my commandments and this is the law and the prophets for they truly testified of me and now it came to pass that when jesus had spoken these words he said unto those twelve whom he had chosen ye are my disciples and ye are a light unto this people who are a remnant of the house of joseph and behold this is the land of your inheritance and the father hath given it unto you and not at any time hath the father given me commandment that i should tell it unto your brethren at jerusalem neither at any time hath the father given me commandment that i should tell unto them concerning the other tribes of the house of israel whom the father hath led away out of the land this much did the father command me that i should tell unto them 
that other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. And now, because of stiff-neckedness and unbelief, they understood not my word. Therefore I was commanded to say no more of the Father concerning this thing unto them. But verily I say unto you, that the Father hath commanded me, and I tell it unto you, that ye were separated from among them because of their iniquity. Therefore it is because of their iniquity that they know not of you. And verily I say unto you again, that the other tribes hath the Father separated from them, and it is because of their iniquity that they know not of them. And verily I say unto you, that ye are they of whom I said, Other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. And they understood me not, for they supposed it had been the Gentiles. For they understood not that the Gentiles should be converted through their preaching. And they understood me not that I said they shall hear my voice. And they understood me not that the Gentiles should not at any time hear my voice, that I should not manifest myself unto them, save it were by the Holy Ghost. But behold, ye have both heard my voice and seen me, and ye are my sheep, and ye are numbered among those whom the Father hath given me. Third Nephi, chapter 16. And verily, verily, I say unto you, that I have other sheep which are not of this land, neither of the land of Jerusalem, neither in any parts of that land round about whither I have been to minister. For they of whom I speak are they who have not as yet heard my voice, neither have I at any time manifested myself unto them. But I have received a commandment of the Father that I shall go unto them, and that they shall hear my voice, and shall be numbered among my sheep, that there may be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore I go to show myself unto them. And I command you that ye shall write these sayings after I am gone, that if it so be that my people at Jerusalem, they who have seen me and have been with me in my ministry, do not ask the Father in my name, that they may receive a knowledge of you by the Holy Ghost, and also of the other tribes whom they know not of, that these sayings which ye shall write shall be kept and shall be manifested unto the Gentiles, that through the fullness of the Gentiles, the remnant of their seed, who shall be scattered forth upon the face of the earth because of their unbelief, may be brought in, or may be brought to a knowledge of me, their Redeemer. And then will I gather them in from the four quarters of the earth, and then will I fulfill the covenant which the Father hath made unto all the people of the house of Israel. And blessed are the Gentiles because of their belief in me, in and of the Holy Ghost, which witnesses unto them of me and of the Father. Behold, because of their belief in me, saith the Father, and because of the unbelief of you, O house of Israel, in the latter day shall the truth come unto the Gentiles, that the fullness of these things shall be made known unto them. But woe, saith the Father, unto the unbelieving of the Gentiles, for notwithstanding they have come forth upon the face of this land, and have scattered my people who are of the house of Israel. And my people who are of the house of Israel have been cast out from among them, and have been trodden under feet by them. And because of the mercies of the Father unto the Gentiles, and also the judgments of the Father upon my people who are of the house of Israel, verily, verily, I say unto you, that after all this, and I have caused my people who are of the house of Israel to be smitten, and to be afflicted, and to be slain, and to be cast out from among them, and to become hated by them, and to become a hiss, and a byword among them. And thus commandeth the Father, that I should say unto you at that day when the Gentiles shall sin against my gospel, and shall reject the fullness of my gospel, and shall be lifted up in the pride of their hearts above all nations and above all the people of the whole earth, and shall be filled with all manner of lyings, and of deceits, and of mischiefs, and all manner of hypocrisy, and murders, and priestcrafts, and whoredoms, and of secret abominations. And if they shall do all those things, and shall reject the fullness of my gospel, behold, saith the Father, I will bring the fullness of my gospel from among them. And then will I remember my covenant which I have made unto my people, O house of Israel, and I will bring my gospel unto them. And I will show unto thee, O house of Israel, that the Gentiles shall not have power over you, 
but I will remember my covenant unto you, O house of Israel. And ye shall come unto the knowledge of the fullness of my gospel. But if the Gentiles will repent and return unto me, saith the Father, behold, they shall be numbered among my people, O house of Israel. And I will not suffer my people, who are of the house of Israel, to go through among them and tread them down, saith the Father. But if they will not turn unto me and hearken unto my voice, I will suffer them, yea, I will suffer my people, O house of Israel, that they shall go through among them, and shall tread them down, and they shall be as salt, which hath lost its savour, which is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out, and to be trodden under foot of my people, O house of Israel. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Thus hath the Father commanded me, that I should give unto this people this land for their inheritance. And then the words of the prophet Isaiah shall be fulfilled, which say, Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice, with the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye, when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Break forth into joy, sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord hath comforted his people, he hath redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eye of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of God. Third Nephi, chapter 17 Behold, now it came to pass, that when Jesus had spoken these words, he looked round about again on the multitude, and he said unto them, Behold, my time is at hand. I perceive that ye are weak, that ye cannot understand all my words which I am commanded of the Father to speak unto you at this time. Therefore go ye unto your homes, and ponder upon the things which I have said, and ask of the Father in my name, that ye may understand, and prepare your minds for the morrow, and I come unto you again. But now I go unto the Father, and also to show myself unto the lost tribes of Israel, for they are not lost unto the Father, for he knoweth whither he hath taken them. And it came to pass, that when Jesus had spoken, he cast his eyes round about again on the multitude. And behold, they were in tears, and did look steadfastly upon him, as if they would ask him to tarry a little longer with them. And he said unto them, Behold, my bowels are filled with compassion towards you. Have ye any that are sick among you? Bring them hither. Have ye any that are lame, or blind, or halt, or maimed, or leprous, or that are withered, or that are deaf, or that are afflicted in any manner? Bring them hither, and I will heal them. For I have compassion upon you. My bowels are filled with mercy. For I perceive that ye desire that I should show unto you what I have done unto your brethren at Jerusalem. For I see that your faith is sufficient that I should heal you. And it came to pass that when he had thus spoken, all the multitude with one accord did go forth with their sick, and their afflicted, and their lame, and with their blind, and with their dumb, and with all them that were afflicted in any manner, and he did heal them every one as they were brought forth unto him. And they did all, both they who had been healed, and they who were whole, bow down at his feet, and did worship him. And as many as could come, for the multitude did kiss his feet, insomuch that they did bathe his feet with their tears. And it came to pass that he commanded that their little children should be brought. So they brought their little children, and set them down upon the ground round about him. And Jesus stood in the midst, and the multitude gave way till they had all been brought unto him. And it came to pass that when they had all been brought, and Jesus stood in the midst, he commanded the multitude that they should kneel down upon the ground. And it came to pass that when they had knelt upon the ground, Jesus groaned within himself, and said, Father, I am troubled because of the wickedness of the people of the house of Israel. And when he had said these words, he himself also knelt upon the earth, and behold, he prayed unto the Father. And the things which he prayed cannot be written, and the multitude did bear record who heard him. And after this manner do they bear record. The eye 
hath never seen, neither hath the ear heard before, so great and marvelous things as we saw and heard Jesus speak unto the Father. And no tongue can speak, neither can there be written by any man, neither can the hearts of men conceive of so great and marvelous things as we both saw and heard Jesus speak. And no one can conceive of the joy which filled our souls at the time we heard him pray for us unto the Father. And it came to pass that when Jesus had made an end of praying unto the Father, he arose, but so great was the joy of the multitude that they were overcome. And it came to pass that Jesus spake unto them, and bade them arise. And they arose from the earth, and he said unto them, Blessed are ye because of your faith. And now, behold, my joy is full. And when he had said these words, he wept. And the multitude bare record of it, and he took their little children, one by one, and blessed them, and prayed unto the Father for them. And when he had done this, he wept again. And he spake unto the multitude, and said unto them, Behold your little ones. And as they looked to behold, they cast their eyes towards heaven, and they saw the heavens open, and they saw angels descending out of heaven, as it were in the midst of fire. And they came down and encircled those little ones about, and they were encircled about with fire, and the angels did minister unto them. And the multitude did see, and hear, and bear record, and they know that their record is true, for they all of them did see and hear every man for himself, and they were in number about two thousand and five hundred souls, and they did consist of men, women, and children. End of Third Nephi, chapters fourteen through seventeen. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hesmes.blogspot.com. Third Nephi, chapters eighteen to twenty of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Third Nephi, chapters eighteen to twenty. Third Nephi, chapter eighteen. And it came to pass that Jesus commanded his disciples that they should bring forth some bread and wine unto him. And while they were gone for bread and wine, he commanded the multitude that they should sit themselves down upon the earth. And when the disciples had come with bread and wine, he took of the bread and brake and blessed it. And he gave unto the disciples and commanded that they should eat. And when they had eaten and were filled, he commanded that they should give unto the multitude. And when the multitude had eaten and were filled, he said unto the disciples, Behold, there shall one be ordained among you, and to him will I give power, that he shall break bread and bless it, and give it unto the people of my church, unto all those who shall believe and be baptized in my name. And this shall ye always observe to do, even as I have done, even as I have broken bread and blessed it and given it unto you. And this shall ye do in remembrance of my body, which I have shown unto you. And it shall be a testimony unto the Father, that ye do always remember me. And if ye do always remember me, ye shall have my spirit to be with you. And it came to pass that when he said these words, he commanded his disciples that they should take of the wine of the cup and drink of it, and that they should also give unto the multitude that they might drink of it. And it came to pass that they did so, and did drink of it, and were filled. And they gave unto the multitude, and they did drink, and they were filled. And when the disciples had done this, Jesus said unto them, Blessed are ye for this thing which ye have done, for this is fulfilling my commandments. And this doth witness unto the Father that ye are willing to do that which I have commanded you. And this shall ye always do, to those who repent and are baptized in my name. And ye shall do it in remembrance of my blood, which I have shed for you, that ye may witness unto the Father that ye do always remember me. And if ye do always remember me, ye shall have my spirit to be with you. And I give unto you a commandment, that ye shall do these things. And if ye shall always do these things, blessed are ye, 
for ye are built upon my rock. But whoso among you shall do more or less than these are not built upon my rock, but are built upon a sandy foundation. And when the rain descends, and the floods come, and the winds blow and beat upon them, they shall fall, and the gates of hell are ready open to receive them. Therefore blessed are ye, if ye shall keep my commandments, which the Father hath commanded me that I should give unto you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye must watch and pray always, lest ye be tempted by the devil, and ye be led away captive by him. And as I have prayed among you, even so shall ye pray in my church, among my people, who do repent and are baptized in my name. Behold, I am the light. I have set an example for you. And it came to pass that when Jesus had spoken these words unto his disciples, he turned again unto the multitude, and said unto them, Behold, verily, verily, I say unto you, ye must watch and pray always, lest ye enter into temptation. For Satan desireth to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Therefore ye must always pray unto the Father in my name. And whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, which is right, believing that ye shall receive, behold, it shall be given unto you. Pray in your families unto the Father always in my name, that your wives and your children may be blessed. And behold, ye shall meet together oft, and ye shall not forbid any man from coming unto you when ye shall meet together. But suffer them that they may come unto you, and forbid them not. But ye shall pray for them, and shall not cast them out. And if it so be that they come unto you oft, ye shall pray for them unto the Father in my name. Therefore hold up your light, that it may shine unto the world. Behold, I am the light which ye shall hold up, that which ye have seen me do. Behold, ye see that I have prayed unto the Father, and ye all have witnessed. And ye see that I have commanded that none of you should go away, but rather have commanded that ye should come unto me, that ye might feel and see. Even so shall ye do unto the world. And whosoever breaketh this commandment suffereth himself to be led into temptation. And now it came to pass that when Jesus had spoken these words, he turned his eyes again upon the disciples whom he had chosen, and said unto them, Behold, verily, verily, I say unto you, I give unto you another commandment, and then I must go unto my Father, that I may fulfill other commandments which he hath given me. And now, behold, this is the commandment which I give unto you, that ye shall not suffer any one knowingly to partake of my flesh and blood unworthily, when ye shall minister it. For whoso eateth and drinketh my flesh and blood unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to his soul. Therefore if ye know that a man is unworthy to eat and drink of my flesh and blood, ye shall forbid him. Nevertheless ye shall not cast him out from among you, but ye shall minister unto him, and shall pray for him unto the Father in my name. And if it so be that he repenteth and is baptized in my name, then shall ye receive him, and shall minister unto him of my flesh and blood. But if he repent not, he shall not be numbered among my people, that he may not destroy my people, for behold, I know my sheep, and they are numbered. Nevertheless, ye shall not cast him out of your synagogues or your places of worship, for unto such shall ye continue to minister, for ye know not but what they will return and repent and come unto me with full purpose of heart, and I shall heal them, and ye shall be the means of bringing salvation unto them. Therefore keep these sayings which I have commanded you, that ye come not under condemnation. For woe unto him whom the Father condemneth. And I give unto you these commandments, because of the disputations which have been among you. And blessed are ye, if ye have no disputations among you. And now I go unto the Father, because it is expedient that I should go unto the Father for your sakes. And it came to pass that when Jesus had made an end of these sayings, he touched with his hand the disciples whom he had chosen one by one, even until he had touched them all, and spake unto them as he touched them. 
and the multitude heard not the words which he spake, therefore they did not bear record. But the disciples bear record that he gave them power to give the Holy Ghost, and I will show unto you hereafter that this record is true. And it came to pass that when Jesus had touched them all, there came a cloud that overshadowed the multitude, that they could not see Jesus. And while they were overshadowed, he departed from them and ascended into heaven. And the disciples saw and did bear record that he ascended again into heaven. Third Nephi chapter 19 And now it came to pass that when Jesus had ascended into heaven, the multitude did disperse, and every man did take his wife and his children, and did return to his own home. And it was noised abroad among the people immediately, before it was yet dark, that the multitude had seen Jesus, and that he'd ministered unto them, and that he would also show himself on the morrow unto the multitude. Yea, and even all the night it was noised abroad concerning Jesus, and insomuch did they send forth unto the people that there were many, yea, an exceedingly great number did labor exceedingly all that night, that they might be on the morrow in the place where Jesus should show himself unto the multitude. And it came to pass that on the morrow, when the multitude was gathered together, behold, Nephi and his brother whom he had raised from the dead, whose name was Timothy, and also his son, whose name was Jonas, and also Mathoni, and Mathonihah, his brother, and Cuman, and Cumanonhi, and Jeremiah, and Shemnon, and Jonas, and Zedekiah, and Isaiah. Now these were the names of the disciples whom Jesus had chosen, and it came to pass that they went forth, and stood in the midst of the multitude. And behold, the multitude was so great that they did cause that they should be separated into twelve bodies. And the twelve did teach the multitude, and behold, they did cause that the multitude should kneel down upon the face of the earth, and should pray unto the Father in the name of Jesus. And the disciples did pray unto the Father also in the name of Jesus, and it came to pass that they arose and ministered unto the people. And when they had ministered those same words which Jesus had spoken, nothing varying from the words which Jesus had spoken, Behold, they knelt again and prayed to the Father in the name of Jesus. And they did pray for that which they most desired, and they desired that the Holy Ghost should be given unto them. And when they had thus prayed, they went down unto the water's edge, and the multitude followed them. And it came to pass that Nephi went down into the water, and was baptized. And he came up out of the water and began to baptize. And he baptized all those whom Jesus had chosen. And it came to pass, when they were all baptized, and had come up out of the water, the Holy Ghost did fall upon them, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And behold, they were encircled about, as if it were by fire, and it came down from heaven, and the multitude did witness it, and did bear record, and angels did come down out of heaven and did minister unto them. And it came to pass that while the angels were ministering unto the disciples, behold, Jesus came and stood in the midst and ministered unto them. And it came to pass that he spake unto the multitude and commanded them that they should kneel down again upon the earth and also that his disciples should kneel down upon the earth. And it came to pass that when they had all knelt down upon the earth, he commanded his disciples that they should pray. And behold, they began to pray. And they did pray unto Jesus, calling him their Lord and their God. And it came to pass that Jesus departed out of the midst of them, and went a little way off from them, and bowed himself to the earth. And he said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast given the Holy Ghost unto these whom I have chosen. And it is because of their belief in me that I have chosen them out of the world. Father, I pray thee that thou wilt give the Holy Ghost unto all them that shall believe in their words. Father, thou hast given them the Holy Ghost because they believe in me, and thou seest that they believe in me because thou hearest them, and they pray unto me, and they pray unto me because I am with them. And now, Father, I pray unto thee for them, and also for all those who shall believe on their words, that they may believe in me, that I may be in them as thou, Father, art in me, that we may be one. 
And it came to pass that when Jesus had thus prayed unto the Father, he came unto his disciples, and behold, they did still continue without ceasing to pray unto him. And they did not multiply many words, for it was given unto them what they should pray, and they were filled with desire. And it came to pass that Jesus blessed them as they did pray unto him, and his countenance did smile upon them, and the light of his countenance did shine upon them. And behold, they were as white as the countenance, and also the garments of Jesus. And behold, the whiteness thereof did exceed all the whiteness. Yea, even there could be nothing upon the earth so white as the whiteness thereof. And Jesus said unto them, Pray on. Nevertheless, they did not cease to pray. And he turned from them again, and went a little way off, and bowed himself to the earth. And he prayed again unto the Father, saying, Father, I thank thee that thou hast purified those whom I have chosen because of their faith. And I pray for them, and also for them who shall believe on their words, that they may be purified in me through faith on their words, even as they are purified in me. Father, I pray not for the world, but for those whom thou hast given me out of the world, because of their faith, that they may be purified in me, that I may be in them as thou, Father, art in me, that we may be one, that I may be glorified in them. And when Jesus had spoken these words, he came again unto his disciples. And behold, they did pray steadfastly, without ceasing unto him. And he did smile upon them again, and behold, they were white, even as Jesus. And it came to pass that he went again a little way off, and prayed unto the Father. And tongue cannot speak the words which he prayed, neither can be written by man the words which he prayed. And the multitude did hear, and do bear record, and their hearts were open, and they did understand in their hearts the words which he prayed. Nevertheless, so great and marvelous were the words which he prayed that they cannot be written, neither can they be uttered by man. And it came to pass that when Jesus had made an end of praying, he came again to the disciples, and said unto them, so great faith have I never seen among all the Jews. Wherefore I could not show unto them so great miracles, because of their unbelief. Verily I say unto you, There are none of them that have seen so great things as ye have seen. Neither have they heard so great things as ye have heard. Third Nephi, Chapter 20 and it came to pass that he commanded the multitude that they should cease to pray, and also his disciples, and he commanded them that they should not cease to pray in their hearts. And he commanded them that they should arise and stand up upon their feet, and they arose up and stood upon their feet. And it came to pass that he brake bread again and blessed it, and gave it to the disciples to eat. And when they had eaten, he commanded them that they should break bread and give unto the multitude. And when they had given unto the multitude, he also gave them wine to drink, and commanded them that they should give unto the multitude. Now there had been no bread, neither wine, brought by the disciples, neither by the multitude, but he truly gave unto them bread to eat, and also wine to drink. And he said unto them, He that eateth this bread eateth of my body to his soul, and he that drinketh of this wine drinketh of my blood to his soul and his soul shall never hunger nor thirst, but shall be filled. Now when the multitude had all eaten and drunk, behold, they were filled with the Spirit, and they did cry out with one voice, and gave glory to Jesus, whom they both saw and heard. And it came to pass that when they had all given glory unto Jesus, he said unto them, Behold, now I finish the commandment which the Father hath commanded me concerning this people, who are a remnant of the house of Israel. Ye remember that I spake unto you, and said, that when the words of Isaiah should be fulfilled, behold, they are written, ye have them before you, therefore search them. And verily, verily, I say unto you, that when they shall be fulfilled, then is the fulfilling of the covenant which the Father hath made unto his people, O house of Israel. And then shall the remnants which shall be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth be gathered in from the east, and from the west, and from the south, and from the north, and they shall be brought to the knowledge of the Lord their God, who hath redeemed them. 
and the Father hath commanded me that I should give unto you this land for your inheritance. And I say unto you that if the Gentiles do not repent after the blessing which they shall receive, after they have scattered my people, then shall ye, who are a remnant of the house of Jacob, go forth among them, and ye shall be in the midst of them who shall be many, and ye shall be among them as a lion among the beasts of the forest, and as a young lion among the flocks of the sheep, who, if he goeth through, both treadeth down, and teareth in pieces, and none can deliver. Thy hand shall be lifted up upon thine adversaries, and all thine enemies shall be cut off. And I will gather my people together, as a man gathereth his sheaves into the floor. For I will make my people with whom the Father hath covenanted. Yea, I will make thy horn iron, and I will make thy hooves brass. And thou shalt beat in pieces many people. And I will consecrate their gain unto the Lord, and their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth. And behold, I am he who doeth it. And it shall come to pass, saith the Father, that the sword of my justice shall hang over them at that day. And except they repent, it shall fall upon them, saith the Father, yea, even upon all the nations of the Gentiles. And it shall come to pass that I will establish my people, O house of Israel. And behold, this people will I establish in this land, unto the fulfilling of the covenant which I made with your father Jacob. And it shall be a new Jerusalem, and the powers of heaven shall be in the midst of this people. Yea, even I will be in the midst of you. Behold, I am he of whom Moses spake, saying, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be cut off from among the people. Verily I say unto you, Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have testified of me. And behold, ye are the children of the prophets, and ye are of the house of Israel, and ye are of the covenant which the Father made with your fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. The Father, having raised me up unto you first, and sent me to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities, and this because ye are the children of the covenant. And after that ye were blessed, then fulfilleth the Father the covenant which he made with Abraham, saying, In thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed, unto the pouring out of the Holy Ghost through me upon the Gentiles, which blessing upon the Gentiles shall make them mighty above all, unto the scattering of my people, O house of Israel. And they shall be a scourge unto the people of this land. Nevertheless, when they shall have received the fullness of my gospel, then if they shall harden their hearts against me, I will return their iniquities upon their own heads, saith the Father. And I will remember the covenant which I have made with my people, and I have covenanted with them, that I would gather them together in mine own due time, that I would give unto them again the land of their fathers for their inheritance which is the land of Jerusalem, which is the promised land unto them for ever, saith the Father. And it shall come to pass that the time cometh when the fullness of my gospel shall be preached unto them, and they shall believe in me, that I am Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and shall pray unto the Father in my name. Then shall their watchmen lift up their voice, and with the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye. Then will the Father gather them together again, and give unto them Jerusalem for the land of their inheritance. Then shall they break forth into joy. Sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem, for the Father hath comforted his people. He hath redeemed Jerusalem. The Father hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of the Father. And the Father and I are one. And then shall be brought to pass that which is written, Awake, awake again, and put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise, 
Sit down, O Jerusalem, loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For thus saith the Lord, Ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that my people shall know my name. Yea, in that day they shall know that I am he that doth speak. And then shall they say, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings unto them, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings unto them of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. And then shall a cry go forth, Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence, touch not that which is unclean, go ye out of the midst of her, be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord, for ye shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight, for the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel shall be your rearward. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently, he shall be exalted and extolled, and be very high, as many were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred, more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. So shall he sprinkle many nations. The kings shall shut their mouths at him, for that which had not been told them shall they see, and that which they had not heard shall they consider. Verily, verily, I say unto you, all these things shall surely come, even as the Father hath commanded me. Then shall this covenant which the Father hath covenanted with his people be fulfilled. And then shall Jerusalem be inhabited again with my people, and it shall be the land of their inheritance. End of Third Nephi, chapters 18 through 20. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Third Nephi, chapters 21 through 26 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Third Nephi, chapters 21 through 26. Third Nephi, chapter 21. And verily I say unto you, I give unto you a sign, that ye may know the time when these things shall be about to take place, that I shall gather in from their long dispersion my people, O house of Israel, and shall establish again among them my Zion. And behold, this is the thing which I will give unto you for a sign. For verily I say unto you, that when these things which I declare unto you, and which I shall declare unto you hereafter of myself, and by the power of the Holy Ghost, which shall be given unto you of the Father, shall be made known unto the Gentiles, that they may know concerning this people who are a remnant of the house of Jacob, and concerning this my people who shall be scattered by them. Verily, verily, I say unto you, when these things shall be made known unto them of the Father, and shall come forth of the Father from them unto you, for it is wisdom in the Father that they should be established in this land, and be set up as a free people by the power of the Father, that these things might come forth from them unto a remnant of your seed, that the covenant of the Father may be fulfilled which he hath covenanted with his people, O house of Israel. Therefore, when these works and the works which shall be wrought among you hereafter shall come forth from the Gentiles unto your seed, which shall dwindle in unbelief because of iniquity, for thus it behooveth the Father that it should come forth from the Gentiles, that he may show forth his power unto the Gentiles for this cause, that the Gentiles, if they will not harden their hearts, that they may repent and come unto me and be baptized in my name, and know of the true points of my doctrine, that they may be numbered among my people, O house of Israel. And when these things come to pass, that thy seed shall begin to know these things, it shall be a sign unto them, that they may know that the work of the Father hath already commenced, unto the fulfilling of the covenant which he hath made unto the people who are of the house of Israel. And when that day shall come, it shall come to pass that kings shall shut their mouths, for that which had not been told them shall they see, and that which they had not heard shall they consider. For in that day, for my sake, shall the Father work a work which shall be a great and a marvelous work among them, and there shall be among them those who will not believe it, although a man shall declare it unto them. 
but behold the life of my servant shall be in my hand therefore they shall not hurt him although he shall be marred because of them yet i will heal him for i will show unto them that my wisdom is greater than the cunning of the devil therefore it shall come to pass that whosoever will not believe in my words who am jesus christ which the father shall cause him to bring forth unto the gentiles and shall give unto him power that he shall bring them forth unto the gentiles it shall be done even as moses said they shall be cut off from among my people who are of the covenant and my people who are a remnant of jacob shall be among the gentiles yea in the midst of them as a lion among the beasts of the forest as a young lion among the flocks of the sheep who if he go through both treadeth down and teareth in pieces and none can deliver their hand shall be lifted up upon their adversaries and all their enemies shall be cut off yea woe be unto the gentiles except they repent for it shall come to pass in that day saith the father that i will cut off thy horses out of the midst of thee and i will destroy thy chariots and i will cut off the cities of thy land and throw down all thy strongholds and i will cut off witchcrafts out of thy land and thou shalt have no more soothsayers thy graven images i will also cut off and thy standing images out of the midst of thee and thou shalt no more worship the works of thy hands and i will pluck up thy groves out of the midst of thee so will i destroy thy cities and it shall come to pass that all lyings and deceivings and envyings and strifes and priestcrafts and whoredoms shall be done away for it shall come to pass saith the father that at that day whosoever will not repent and come unto my beloved son them will i cut off from among my people o house of israel and i will execute vengeance and fury upon them even as upon the heathen such as they have not heard but if they will repent and hearken unto my words and harden not their hearts i will establish my church among them and they shall come in unto the covenant and be numbered among this the remnant of jacob unto whom i have given this land for their inheritance and they shall assist my people the remnant of jacob and also as many of the house of israel that they may build a city which shall be called the new jerusalem and then shall they assist my people that they may be gathered in who are scattered upon all the face of the land in unto the new jerusalem and then shall the power of heaven come down among them and i will also be in the midst and then shall the work of the father commence it that day even when this gospel shall be preached among the remnant of this people verily i say unto you at that day shall the work of the father commence among all the dispersed of my people yea even the tribes which have been lost which the father hath led away out of jerusalem yea the work shall commence among all the dispersed of my people with the father to prepare the way whereby they may come unto me that they may call on the father in my name yea and then shall the work commence with the father among all nations in preparing the way whereby his people may be gathered home to the land of their inheritance and they shall go out from all nations and they shall not go out in haste nor go by flight for i will go before them saith the father and i will be their rearward third nephi chapter twenty two and then shall that which is written come to pass sing o barren thou that didst not bear break forth into singing and cry aloud thou that didst not travail with child for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife saith the lord enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitations spare not lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes for thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left and thy seed shall inherit the gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited fear not for thou shalt not be ashamed neither be thou confounded for thou shalt not be put to shame for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth and shalt not remember the reproach of thy youth and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood any more for thy maker thy husband the lord of hosts is his name and thy redeemer the holy one of israel the god of the whole earth shall he be called for the lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit and a wife of youth when thou wast refused saith thy god 
for a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. For this the waters of Noah unto me, for as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee. For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord, that hath mercy on thee. O thou afflicted, tossed with tempest, and not comforted, behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors, and lay thy foundations with sapphires. And I will make thy windows of agates, and thy gates of carbuncles, and all thy borders of pleasant stones, and all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together against thee, not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall revile against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Third Nephi, chapter 23. And now behold, I say unto you that ye ought to search these things. Yea, a commandment I give unto you that ye search these things diligently, for great are the words of Isaiah. For surely he spake as touching all things concerning my people, which are of the house of Israel. Therefore it must needs be that he must speak also to the Gentiles. And all things that he spake have been and shall be, even according to the words which he spake. Therefore give heed to my words. Write the things which I have told you, and according to the time and the will of the Father they shall go forth unto the Gentiles. And whosoever will hearken unto my words, and repenteth and is baptized, the same shall be saved. Search the prophets for many there be that testify of these things. And now it came to pass that when Jesus had said these words, he said unto them again, after he had expounded all the scriptures unto them which they had received, he said unto them, Behold, other scriptures I would that ye should write that ye have not. And it came to pass that he said unto Nephi, Bring forth the record which ye have kept. And when Nephi had brought forth the records and laid them before him, he cast his eyes upon them and said, Verily I say unto you, I commanded my servant Samuel, the Lamanite, that he should testify unto this people, that at the day that the Father should glorify his name in me, that there were many saints who should arise from the dead, and should appear unto many, and should minister unto them. And he said unto them, Was it not so? And his disciples answered him and said, Yea, Lord. Samuel did prophesy according to thy words, and they were all fulfilled. And Jesus said unto them, How be it that ye have not written this thing, that many saints did arise and appear unto many and did minister unto them? And it came to pass that Nephi remembered that this thing had not been written. And it came to pass that Jesus commanded that it should be written, therefore it was written according as he commanded. And now it came to pass that when Jesus had expounded all the scriptures in one which they had written, he commanded them that they should teach the things which he had expounded unto them. Chapter 24 And it came to pass that he commanded them that they should write the words which the Father had given unto Malachi, which he should tell unto them. And it came to pass that after they were written he expounded them. And these are the words which he did tell unto them, saying, Thus said the father unto Malachi, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple. 
even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord, as in the days of old, and as in former years. And I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, and against the adulterers, and against false swearers, and against those who oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger, and fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers ye are gone away from mine ordinances, and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye say, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord, yet ye say, What have we spoken against thee? Ye have said, It is vain to serve God, and what doth it profit that we have kept his ordinances, and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the proud happy, yea, they that work wickedness are set up, Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord, and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Third Nephi, chapter 25 For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name, shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves in the stall. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Third Nephi chapter 26 And now it came to pass that when Jesus had told these things, he expounded them unto the multitude, and he did expound all things unto them, both great and small. And he saith, These scriptures which ye have not with you, the Father commanded that I should give unto you, for it was wisdom in him that they should be given unto future generations. And he did expound all things, even from the beginning, until the time that he should come in his glory, yea, even all things which should come upon the face of the earth, even till the elements should melt with fervent heat, and the earth should be wrapped together as a scroll, and the heavens and the earth should pass away. 
and even unto the great and last day, when all people and all kindreds and all nations and tongues shall stand before God to be judged of their works, whether they be good or whether they be evil. For if they be good, to the resurrection of everlasting life, and if they be evil, to the resurrection of damnation, being on a parallel, the one on the one hand and the other on the other hand, according to the mercy and the justice and the holiness which is in Christ, who was before the world began. And now there cannot be written in this book even a hundredth part of the things which Jesus did truly teach unto the people. But behold, the plates of Nephi do contain the more part of the things which he taught the people. And these things have I written, which are a lesser part of the things which he taught the people. And I have written them to the intent that they may be brought again unto this people from the Gentiles, according to the words which Jesus hath spoken. And when they shall have received this, which is expedient that they should have first, to try their faith, and if it shall so be that they shall believe these things, then shall the greater things be made manifest unto them. And if it so be that they will not believe these things, then shall the greater things be withheld from them unto their condemnation. Behold, I was about to write them all which were engraven upon the plates of Nephi, but the Lord forbade it, saying, I will try the faith of my people. Therefore I, Mormon, do write the things which have been commanded me of the Lord. And now I, Mormon, make an end of my sayings, and proceed to write the things which have been commanded me. Therefore I would that ye should behold, that the Lord truly did teach the people, for the space of three days, and after that he did show himself unto them oft, and did break bread oft, and bless it, and give it unto them. And it came to pass that he did teach and minister unto the children of the multitude of whom hath been spoken, and he did loose their tongues, and they did speak unto their fathers great and marvelous things, even greater than he had revealed unto the people. And he loosed their tongues that they could utter. And it came to pass that after he had ascended into heaven the second time that he showed himself unto them, and had gone unto the Father after having healed all their sick and their lame, and opened the eyes of their blind, and unstopped the ears of the deaf, and even had done all manner of cures among them, and raised a man from the dead, and had shown forth his power unto them, and had ascended unto the Father. Behold, it came to pass on the morrow that the multitude gathered themselves together, and they both saw and heard these children. Yea, even babes did open their mouths and utter marvelous things. And the things which they did utter were forbidden that there should not any man write them. And it came to pass that the disciples whom Jesus had chosen began from that time forth to baptize and to teach as many as did come unto them, and as many as were baptized in the name of Jesus were filled with the Holy Ghost. And many of them saw and heard unspeakable things which are not lawful to be written. And they taught and did minister one to another, and they had all things common among them, every man dealing justly one with another. And it came to pass that they did do all things even as Jesus had commanded them. And they who were baptized in the name of Jesus were called the Church of Christ. End of Third Nephi, chapters twenty one through twenty six. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Third Nephi, chapters twenty seven through thirty of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Third Nephi, chapters twenty seven through thirty. Third Nephi, chapter twenty seven. And it came to pass that as the disciples of Jesus were journeying and were preaching the things which they had both heard and seen and were baptizing in the name of Jesus, it came to pass that the disciples were gathered together and were united in mighty prayer and fasting. And Jesus again showed himself unto them, for they were praying unto the Father in his name. And Jesus came and stood in the midst of them and said unto them, What will ye that I shall give unto you? And they said unto him, Lord, we will that thou wouldst tell us the name whereby we shall call this church, 
for there are disputations among the people concerning this matter. And the Lord said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Why is it that the people should murmur and dispute because of this thing? Have ye not read the scriptures, which say ye must take upon you the name of Christ, which is my name? For by this name shall ye be called at the last day. And whoso taketh upon him my name, and endureth to the end, the same shall be saved at the last day. Therefore, whatsoever ye shall do, ye shall do it in my name. Therefore ye shall call the church in my name, and ye shall call upon the Father in my name, that he will bless the church for my sake. And how be it, my church, save it be called in my name? For if a church be called in Moses' name, then it be Moses' church. Or if it be called in the name of a man, then it be the church of a man. But if it be called in my name, then it is my church, if it so be that they are built upon my gospel. Verily I say unto you that ye are built upon my gospel. Therefore ye shall call whatsoever things ye do call in my name. Therefore, if ye shall call upon the Father for the church, if it be in my name, the Father will hear you. And if it so be that the church is built upon my gospel, then will the Father show forth his own works in it. But if it be not built upon my gospel, and is built upon the works of man or upon the works of the devil, verily I say unto you, they have joy in their works for a season. And by and by the end cometh, and they are hewn down and cast into the fire from whence there is no return. For their works do follow them, for it is because of their works that they are hewn down. Therefore remember the things that I have told you. Behold, I have given unto you my gospel, and this is the gospel which I have given unto you, that I came into the world to do the will of my Father, because my Father sent me. And my Father sent me, that I might be lifted up upon the cross. And after that I had been lifted up upon the cross, that I might draw all men unto me. That as I have been lifted up by men, even so shall men be lifted up by the Father, to stand before me, to be judged of their works, whether they be good or whether they be evil. And for this cause have I been lifted up. Therefore, according to the power of the Father, I will draw all men unto me, that they may be judged according to their works. And it shall come to pass that whoso repenteth and is baptized in my name shall be filled. And if he endureth to the end, behold, him will I hold guiltless before my Father at that day when I shall stand to judge the world. And he that endureth not unto the end, the same is he that is also hewn down and cast into the fire, from whence they can no more return, because of the justice of the Father. And this is the word which he hath given unto the children of men. And for this cause he fulfilleth the words which he hath given. And he lieth not, but fulfilleth all his words. And no unclean thing can enter into his kingdom. Therefore nothing entereth into his rest, save it be those who have washed their garments in my blood, because of their faith and the repentance of all their sins, and their faithfulness unto the end. Now this is the commandment. Repent, all ye ends of the earth, and come unto me, and be baptized in my name, that ye may be sanctified by the reception of the Holy Ghost, that ye may stand spotless before me at the last day. Verily, verily, I say unto you, this is my gospel, and ye know the things that ye must do in my church, for the works which ye have seen me do, that shall ye also do. For that which ye have seen me do, even that shall ye do. Therefore, if ye do these things, blessed are ye, for ye shall be lifted up at the last day. Write the things which ye have seen and heard, save it be those which are forbidden. Write the works of this people, which shall be even as hath been written, of that which hath been. For behold, out of the books which have been written, and which shall be written, shall this people be judged, for by them shall their works be known unto men. And behold, all things are written by the Father. Therefore out of the books which shall be written shall the world be judged. And know ye that ye shall be judges of this people according to the judgment which I shall give unto you, which shall be just. Therefore what manner of men ought ye to be? Verily I say unto you, even as I am. And now I go unto the Father, 
And verily I say unto you, Whatsoever things ye shall ask the Father in my name shall be given unto you. Therefore ask, and ye shall receive. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For he that asketh receiveth, and unto him that knocketh it shall be opened. And now behold, my joy is great, even unto fullness, because of you, and also this generation. Yea, and even the Father rejoiceth, and also all the holy angels, because of you and this generation, for none of them are lost. Behold, I would that ye should understand, for I mean them who are now alive of this generation, and none of them are lost, and in them I have fullness of joy. But behold, it sorroweth me, because of the fourth generation from this generation, for they are led away captive by him, even as was the son of perdition. For they will sell me for silver, and for gold, and for that which moth doth corrupt, and which thieves can break through and steal. And in that day will I visit them, even in turning their works upon their own heads. And it came to pass that when Jesus had ended these sayings, he said unto his disciples, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leads to life, and few there be that find it. But wide is the gate, and broad the way which leads to death, and many there be that travel therein, until the night cometh wherein no man can work. Third Nephi, chapter 28. And it came to pass, when Jesus had said these words, he spake unto his disciples one by one, saying unto them, What is it that ye desire of me? After that I am gone to the Father. And they all spake, save it were three, saying, we desire that after we have lived unto the age of man, that our ministry wherein thou hast called us may have an end, that we may speedily come unto thee in thy kingdom. And he said unto them, Blessed are ye, because ye desired this thing of me. Therefore, after that ye are seventy and two years old, ye shall come unto me in my kingdom, and with me ye shall find rest. And when he had spoken unto them, he turned himself unto the three, and said unto them, what will ye that I should do unto you when I am gone again unto the Father? And they sorrowed in their hearts, for they durst not speak unto him the things which they desired. And he said unto them, Behold, I know your thoughts, and ye have desired the thing which John, my beloved, who was with me in my ministry, before that I was lifted up by the Jews, desired of me. Therefore more blessed are ye, for ye shall never taste of death. But ye shall live to behold all the doings of the Father unto the children of men, even until all things shall be fulfilled according to the will of the Father, when I shall come in my glory with the powers of heaven. And ye shall never endure the pains of death. But when I shall come in my glory, ye shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye from mortality to immortality, and then shall ye be blessed in the kingdom of my Father." And again ye shall not have pain, while ye shall dwell in the flesh. Neither sorrow, save it be for the sins of the world, and all this will I do, because of the thing which ye have desired of me. For ye have desired that ye might bring the souls of men unto me, while the world shall stand. And for this cause ye shall have fullness of joy. And ye shall sit down in the kingdom of my Father. Yea, your joy shall be full, even as the Father hath given me fullness of joy and ye shall be even as I am, and I am even as the Father, and the Father and I are one. And the Holy Ghost beareth record of the Father in me, and the Father giveth the Holy Ghost unto the children of men because of me. And it came to pass that when Jesus had spoken these words, he touched every one of them with his finger, save it were the three who were to tarry. And then he departed. And behold, the heavens were opened, and they were caught up into heaven, and saw and heard unspeakable things. And it was forbidden them that they should utter, neither was it given unto them power that they could utter the things which they saw and heard. And whether they were in the body or out of the body, they could not tell. For it did seem unto them like a transfiguration of them, that they were changed from this body of flesh into an immortal state, that they could behold the things of God. But it came to pass that they did again minister unto the face of the earth. Nevertheless, they did not minister of the things which they had heard and seen because of the commandment which was given them in heaven. 
and now whether they were mortal or immortal from the day of their transfiguration i know not but this much i know according to the record which hath been given they did go forth upon the face of the land and did minister unto all the people uniting as many to the church as would believe in their preaching baptizing them and as many as were baptized did receive the holy ghost and they were cast into prison by them who did not belong to the church and the prisons could not hold them for they were rent in twain and they were cast down into the earth but they did smite the earth with the word of god insomuch that by his power they were delivered out of the depths of the earth and therefore they could not dig pits sufficient to hold them and thrice they were cast into a furnace and received no harm and twice were they cast into a den of wild beasts and behold they did play with the beasts as a child with a suckling lamb and received no harm and it came to pass that thus did they go forth among all the people of nephi and did preach the gospel of christ unto all the people upon the face of the land and they were converted unto the lord and were united unto the church of christ and thus the people of that generation were blessed according to the word of jesus and now i mormon make an end of speaking concerning these things for a time behold i was about to write the names of those who were never to taste of death but the lord forbade therefore i write them not for they are hid from the world but behold i have seen them and they have ministered unto me and behold they will be among the gentiles and the gentiles shall know them not they will also be among the jews and the jews shall know them not and it shall come to pass when the lord seeth fit in his wisdom that they shall minister unto all the scattered tribes of israel and unto all nations kindreds tongues and people and shall bring out of them unto jesus many souls that their desire may be fulfilled and also because of the convincing power of god which is in them and they are as the angels of god and if they shall pray unto the father in the name of jesus they can show themselves unto whatsoever man it seemeth them good therefore great and marvelous works shall be wrought by them before the great and coming day when all people must surely stand before the judgment seat of christ yea even among the gentiles shall there be a great and marvelous work wrought by them before the judgment day and if ye had all the scriptures which give an account of all the marvelous works of christ ye would according to the words of christ know that these things must surely come and woe unto him that will not hearken unto the words of jesus and also to them whom he hath chosen and sent among them for whoso receiveth not the words of jesus and the words of those whom he hath sent receiveth not him and therefore he will not receive them at the last day and it would be better for them if they had not been born for do ye suppose that ye can get rid of the justice of an offended god who hath been trampled under feet of men that thereby salvation might come and now behold as i spake concerning those whom the lord hath chosen yea even three who were caught up into the heavens that i knew not whether they were cleansed from mortality to immortality but behold since i wrote i have inquired of the lord and he hath made it manifest unto me that there must needs be a change wrought upon their bodies or else it needs be that they must taste of death therefore that they might not taste of death there was a change wrought upon their bodies that they might not suffer pain nor sorrow save it were for the sins of the world now this change was not equal to that which shall take place at the last day but there was a change wrought upon them insomuch that satan could have no power over them that he could not tempt them and they were sanctified in the flesh that they were holy and that the powers of the earth could not hold them and in this state they were to remain until the judgment day of christ and at that day they were to receive a greater change and to be received into the kingdom of the father to go no more out but to dwell eternally in the heavens third nephi chapter twenty nine and now behold i say unto you that when the lord shall see fit in his wisdom that these sayings shall come unto the gentiles according to his word then ye may know that the covenant which the father hath made with the children of israel concerning their restoration to the lands of their inheritance is already beginning to be fulfilled and ye may know that the words of the lord which have been spoken by the holy prophets shall all be fulfilled and ye need not say that the lord delays his coming unto the children of israel and ye need not imagine in your hearts that the words which have been spoken are vain for behold the lord will remember his covenant which he hath made unto his people of the house of israel 
and when ye shall see these sayings coming forth among you, then ye need not any longer spurn at the doings of the Lord, for the sword of his justice is in his right hand, and behold at that day, if ye shall spurn at his doings, he will cause that it shall soon overtake you. Woe unto him that spurneth at the doings of the Lord, yea, woe unto him that shall deny the Christ and his works. Yea, woe unto him that shall deny the revelations of the Lord, and that shall say, The Lord no longer worketh by revelation, or by prophecy, or by gifts, or by tongues, or by healings, or by the power of the Holy Ghost. Yea, and woe unto him that shall say at that day, to get gain, that there can be no miracle wrought by Jesus Christ, for he that doeth this shall become like unto the son of perdition, for whom there was no mercy, according to the word of Christ. Yea, and ye need not any longer hiss, nor spurn, nor make game of the Jews, nor any of the remnant of the house of Israel. For behold, the Lord remembereth his covenant unto them, and he will do unto them according to that which he hath sworn. Therefore ye need not suppose that ye can turn the right hand of the Lord unto the left, that he may not execute judgment unto the fulfilling of the covenant which he hath made unto the house of Israel. Third Nephi, chapter 30 Hearken, O ye Gentiles, and hear the words of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, which he hath commanded me that I should speak concerning you. For behold, he commandeth me that I should write, saying, Turn, all ye Gentiles, from your wicked ways, and repent of your evil doings, of your lyings, and deceivings, and of your whoredoms, and of your secret abominations, and your idolatries, and of your murders, and your priestcrafts, and your envyings, and your strifes, and from all your wickedness and abominations. And come unto me, and be baptized in my name, that ye may receive a remission of your sins, and be filled with the Holy Ghost, that ye may be numbered with my people who are of the house of Israel. End of Third Nephi, chapters 27 through 30. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmas.blogspot.com Fourth Nephi to Mormon Chapter 4 of the Book of Mormon This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org Recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater the Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Fourth Nephi to Mormon, Chapter 4. And it came to pass that the thirty and fourth year passed away, and also the thirty and fifth. And behold, the disciples of Christ had formed a church of Christ in all the lands round about. And as many as did come unto them and did truly repent of their sins, were baptized in the name of Jesus, and they did also receive the Holy Ghost. And it came to pass, in the thirty and sixth year, the people were all converted unto the Lord, upon all the face of the land, both Nephites and Lamanites, and there were no contentions and disputations among them. And every man did deal justly one with another, and they had all things common among them. Therefore there were not rich and poor, bond and free, but they were all made free and partakers of the heavenly gift. And it came to pass that the thirty and seventh year passed away also, and there still continued to be peace in the land. And there were great and marvelous works wrought by the disciples of Christ, insomuch that they did heal the sick, and raise the dead, and cause the lame to walk, and the blind to receive their sight, and the deaf to hear, and all manner of miracles did they work among the children of men and in nothing did they work miracles, save it were in the name of Jesus. And thus did the thirty and eighth year pass away, and also the thirty and ninth, and forty and first, and the forty and second, yea, 
even until forty and nine years had passed away and also the fifty and first and the fifty and second yea and even until fifty and nine years had passed away and the lord did prosper them exceedingly in the land yea insomuch that they did build cities again where there had been cities burned yea even that great city zarahemla did they cause to be built again but there were many cities which had been sunk and waters came up in the stead thereof therefore these cities could not be renewed and now behold it came to pass that the people of nephi did wax strong and did multiply exceedingly fast and became an exceedingly fair and delightsome people and they were married and given in marriage and were blessed according to the multitude of the promises which the lord had made unto them and they did not walk any more after the performances and ordinances of the law of moses but they did walk after the commandments which they had received from their lord and their god continuing in fasting and prayer and in meeting together oft both to pray and to hear the word of the lord and it came to pass that there was no contention among all the people in all the land but there were mighty miracles wrought among the disciples of jesus and it came to pass that the seventy and first year passed away and also the seventy and second year yea and in fine till the seventy and ninth year had passed away yea even an hundred years had passed away and the disciples of jesus whom he had chosen had all gone to the paradise of god save it were the three who should tarry and there were other disciples ordained in their stead and also many of that generation had passed away and it came to pass that there was no contention in the land because of the love of god which did dwell in the hearts of the people and there were no envyings nor strifes nor tumults nor whoredoms nor lyings nor murders nor any manner of lasciviousness and surely there could not be a happier people among all the people who had been created by the hand of god there were no robbers nor murderers neither were there lamanites nor any manner of ites but they were in one the children of christ and heirs to the kingdom of god and how blessed were they for the lord did bless them in all their doings yea even they were blessed and prospered until an hundred and ten years had passed away and the first generation from christ had passed away and there was no contention in all the land and it came to pass that nephi he that kept this last record and he kept it upon the plates of nephi died and his son amos kept it in his stead and he kept it upon the plates of nephi also and he kept it eighty and four years and there was still peace in the land save it were a small part of the people who had revolted from the church and taken upon them the name of lamanites therefore there began to be lamanites again in the land and it came to pass that amos died also and it was an hundred and ninety and four years from the coming of christ and his son amos kept the record in his stead and he also kept it upon the plates of nephi and it was also written in the book of nephi which is this book and it came to pass 
that two hundred years had passed away, and the second generation had all passed away, save it were a few. And now I, Mormon, would that ye should know that the people had multiplied insomuch that they were spread upon all the face of the land, and that they had become exceedingly rich because of their prosperity in Christ. And now, in this two hundred and first year, there began to be among them those who were lifted up in pride, such as the wearing of costly apparel, and all manner of fine pearls, and of the fine things of the world. And from that time forth, they did have their goods and their substance no more common among them. And they began to be divided into classes, and they began to build up churches unto themselves to get gain, and began to deny the true church of Christ. And it came to pass that when two hundred and ten years had passed away, there were many churches in the land, yea, there were many churches which professed to know the Christ, and yet they did deny the more parts of his gospel, insomuch that they did receive all manner of wickedness, and did administer that which was sacred unto him to whom it had been forbidden because of unworthiness. And this church did multiply exceedingly because of iniquity and because of the power of Satan who did get hold upon their hearts. And again there was another church which denied the Christ and they did persecute the true church of Christ because of their humility and their belief in Christ and they did despise them because of the many miracles which were wrought among them. Therefore they did exercise power and authority over the disciples of Jesus who did tarry with them, and they did cast them into prison. But by the power of the word of God which was in them, the prisons were rent in twain, and they went forth doing mighty miracles among them. Nevertheless, and notwithstanding all these miracles, the people did harden their hearts, and did seek to kill them, even as the Jews at Jerusalem sought to kill Jesus, according to his word. And they did cast them into furnaces of fire, and they came forth receiving no harm. And they also cast them into dens of wild beasts, and they did play with the wild beasts, even as a child with a lamb, and they did come forth from among them, receiving no harm. Nevertheless, the people did harden their hearts, for they were led by many priests and false prophets to build up many churches and to do all manner of iniquity. And they did smite upon the people of Jesus, but the people of Jesus did not smite again, and thus they did dwindle in unbelief and wickedness from year to year, even until two hundred and thirty years had passed away. And now it came to pass in this year, yea, in the two hundred and thirty and first year, there was a great division among the people. And it came to pass that in this year there arose a people who were called the Nephites, and they were true believers in Christ. And among them there were those who were called by the Lamanites, Jacobites, Josephites, and Zoramites. Therefore the true believers in Christ and the true worshippers of Christ, among whom were the three disciples of Jesus who should tarry, were called Nephites and Jacobites and Josephites, and Zoramites. And it came to pass that they who rejected the gospel were called Lamanites, and Lemuelites, and Ishmaelites, and they did not dwindle in unbelief, but they did willfully rebel against the gospel of Christ, and they did teach their children that they should not believe, 
even as their fathers from the beginning did dwindle and it was because of the wickedness and abomination of their fathers even as it was in the beginning and they were taught to hate the children of god even as the lamanites were taught to hate the children of nephi from the beginning and it came to pass that two hundred and forty and four years had passed away and thus were the affairs of the people and the more wicked part of the people did wax strong and became exceedingly more numerous than were the people of god and they did still continue to build up churches unto themselves and adorn them with all manner of precious things and thus did two hundred and fifty years pass away and also two hundred and sixty years and it came to pass that the wicked part of the people began again to build up the secret oaths and combinations of gadianton and also the people who were called the people of nephi began to be proud in their hearts because of their exceeding riches and become vain like unto their brethren the lamanites and from this time the disciples began to sorrow for the sins of the world and it came to pass that when three hundred years had passed away both the people of nephi and the lamanites had become exceedingly wicked one like unto another and it came to pass that the robbers of gadianton did spread over all the face of the land and there were none that were righteous save it were the disciples of jesus and gold and silver did they lay up in store in abundance and did traffic in all manner of traffic and it came to pass that after three hundred and five years had passed away and the people did still remain in wickedness amos died and his brother amaron did keep the record in his stead and it came to pass that when three hundred and twenty years had passed away amaron being constrained by the holy ghost did hide up the records which were sacred yea even all the sacred records which had been handed down from generation to generation which were sacred even until the three hundred and twentieth year from the coming of christ and he did hide them up unto the lord that they might come again unto the remnant of the house of jacob according to the prophecies and the promises of the lord and thus is the end of the record of amaron the book of mormon mormon chapter one and now i mormon make a record of the things which i have both seen and heard and call it the book of mormon and about the time that amaron hid up the records unto the lord he came unto me i being about ten years of age and i began to be learned somewhat after the manner of the learning of my people and amaron said unto me i perceive that thou art a sober child and art quick to observe therefore when ye are about twenty and four years old i would that ye should remember the things that ye have observed concerning this people and when ye are of that age go to the land antum unto a hill which shall be called shim and there have i deposited unto the lord all the sacred engravings concerning this people and behold ye shall take the plates of nephi unto yourself and the remainder shall ye leave in the place where they are and ye shall engrave on the plates of nephi all the things that ye have observed concerning this people and i mormon being a descendant of nephi and my father's name was mormon i remembered the things which amaron commanded me and it came to pass that i being eleven years old was carried by my father into the land southward even to the land of zarahemla 
the whole face of the land had become covered with buildings and the people were as numerous almost as it were the sand of the sea and it came to pass in this year there began to be a war between the nephites who consisted of the nephites and the jacobites and the josephites and the zoramites and this war was between the nephites and the lamanites and the lemuelites and the ishmaelites now the lamanites and the lemuelites and the ishmaelites were called lamanites and the two parties were nephites and lamanites and it came to pass that the war began to be among them in the borders of zarahemla by the waters of sidon and it came to pass that the nephites had gathered together a great number of men even to exceed the number of thirty thousand and it came to pass that they did have in this same year a number of battles in which the nephites did beat the lamanites and did slay many of them and it came to pass that the lamanites withdrew their design and there was peace settled in the land and peace did remain for the space of about four years that there was no bloodshed but wickedness did prevail upon the face of the whole land insomuch that the lord did take away his beloved disciples and the work of miracles and of healing did cease because of the iniquity of the people and there were no gifts from the lord and the holy ghost did not come upon any because of their wickedness and unbelief and i being fifteen years of age and being somewhat of a sober mind therefore i was visited of the lord and tasted and knew of the goodness of jesus and i did endeavor to preach unto this people but my mouth was shut and i was forbidden that i should preach unto them for behold they had wilfully rebelled against their god and the beloved disciples were taken away out of the land because of their iniquity but i did remain among them but i was forbidden to preach unto them because of the hardness of their hearts and because of the hardness of their hearts the land was cursed for their sake and these gadianton robbers who were among the lamanites did infest the land insomuch that the inhabitants thereof began to hide up their treasures in the earth and they became slippery because the lord had cursed the land that they could not hold them nor retain them again and it came to pass that there were sorceries and witchcrafts and magics and the power of the evil one was wrought upon all the face of the land even unto the fulfilling of all the words of abinadi and also samuel the lamanite mormon chapter two and it came to pass in that same year there began to be a war again between the nephites and the lamanites and notwithstanding i being young was large in stature therefore the people of nephi appointed me that i should be their leader or the leader of their armies therefore it came to pass that in my sixteenth year i did go forth at the head of an army of the nephites against the lamanites therefore three hundred and twenty and six years had passed away and it came to pass that in the three hundred and twenty and seventh year the lamanites did come upon us with exceedingly great power insomuch that they did frighten my armies therefore they would not fight and they began to retreat towards the north countries and it came to pass that we did come to the city of angola and we did take possession of the city and make preparations to defend ourselves against the lamanites and it came to pass that we did fortify the city with our might but notwithstanding all our fortifications the lamanites did come upon us and did drive us out of the city and they did also drive us forth out of the land of david and we marched forth and came to the land of joshua which was in the borders west 
by the seashore and it came to pass that we did gather in our people as fast as it were possible that we might get them together in one body but behold the land was filled with robbers and with lamanites and notwithstanding the great destruction which hung over my people they did not repent of their evil doings therefore there was blood and carnage spread throughout all the face of the land both on the part of the nephites and also on the part of the lamanites and it was one complete revolution throughout all the face of the land and now the lamanites had a king and his name was aaron and he came against us with an army of forty and four thousand and behold i withstood him with forty and two thousand and it came to pass that i beat him with my army that he fled before me and behold all this was done and three hundred and thirty years had passed away and it came to pass that the nephites began to repent of their iniquity and began to cry even as had been prophesied by samuel the prophet for behold no man could keep that which was his own for the thieves and the robbers and the murderers and the magic art and the witchcraft which was in the land thus there began to be a mourning and a lamentation in all the land because of these things and more especially among the people of nephi and it came to pass that when i mormon saw their lamentation and their mourning and their sorrow before the lord my heart did begin to rejoice within me knowing the mercies and the long suffering of the lord therefore supposing that he would be merciful unto them that they would again become a righteous people but behold this my joy was vain for their sorrowing was not unto repentance because of the goodness of god but it was rather the sorrowing of the damned because the lord would not always suffer them to take happiness in sin and they did not come unto jesus with broken hearts and contrite spirits but they did curse god and wish to die nevertheless they would struggle with the sword for their lives and it came to pass that my sorrow did return unto me again and i saw that the day of grace was passed with them both temporally and spiritually for i saw thousands of them hewn down in open rebellion against their god and heaped up as dung upon the face of the land and thus three hundred and forty and four years had passed away and it came to pass that in the three hundred and forty and fifth year the nephites did begin to flee before the lamanites and they were pursued until they came even to the land of jashon before it was possible to stop them in their retreat and now the city of jashon was near the land where amaran had deposited the records unto the lord that they might not be destroyed and behold i had gone according to the word of amaran and taken the plates of nephi and did make a record according to the words of amaran and upon the plates of nephi i did make a full account of all the wickedness and abominations but upon these plates i did forbear to make a full account of their wickedness and abominations for behold a continual scene of wickedness and abominations has been before mine eyes ever since i have been sufficient to behold the ways of man and woe is me because of their wickedness for my heart has been filled with sorrow because of their wickedness all my days nevertheless i know that i shall be lifted up at the last day and it came to pass that in this year the people of nephi again were hunted and driven and it came to pass that we were driven forth until we had come northward to the land which was called shem 
and it came to pass that we did fortify the city of shem and we did gather in our people as much as it were possible that perhaps we might save them from destruction and it came to pass in the three hundred and forty and sixth year they began to come upon us again and it came to pass that i did speak unto my people and did urge them with great energy that they would stand boldly before the lamanites and fight for their wives and their children and their houses and their homes and my words did arouse them somewhat to vigor insomuch that they did not flee from before the lamanites but did stand with boldness against them and it came to pass that we did contend with an army of thirty thousand against an army of fifty thousand and it came to pass that we did stand before them with such firmness that they did flee from before us and it came to pass that when they had fled we did pursue them with our armies and did meet them again and did beat them nevertheless the strength of the lord was not with us yea we were left to ourselves that the spirit of the lord did not abide in us therefore we had become weak like unto our brethren and my heart did sorrow because of this the great calamity of my people because of their wickedness and their abominations but behold we did go forth against the lamanites and the robbers of gadianton until we had again taken possession of the lands of our inheritance and the three hundred and forty and ninth year had passed away and in the three hundred and fiftieth year we made a treaty with the lamanites and the robbers of gadianton in which we did get the lands of our inheritance divided and the lamanites did give unto us the land northward yea even to the narrow passage which led into the land southward and we did give unto the lamanites all the land southward mormon chapter three and it came to pass that the lamanites did not come to battle again until ten years more had passed away and behold i had employed my people the nephites in preparing their lands and their arms against the time of battle and it came to pass that the lord did say unto me cry unto this people repent ye and come unto me and be ye baptized and build up again my church and ye shall be spared and i did cry unto this people but it was in vain and they did not realize that it was the lord that had spared them and granted unto them a chance for repentance and behold they did harden their hearts against the lord their god and it came to pass that after this tenth year had passed away making in the whole three hundred and sixty years from the coming of christ the king of the lamanites sent an epistle unto me which gave unto me to know that they were preparing to come again to battle against us and it came to pass that i did cause my people that they should gather themselves together at the land desolation to a city which was in the borders by the narrow pass which led into the land southward and there we did place our armies that we might stop the armies of the lamanites that they might not get possession of any of our lands therefore we did fortify them with all our force and it came to pass that in the three hundred and sixty and first year the lamanites did come down to the city of desolation to battle against us and it came to pass that in that year we did beat them insomuch that they did return to their own lands again and in the three hundred and sixty and second year they did come down again to battle and we did beat them again and did slay a great number of them and their dead were cast into the sea and now 
because of this great thing which my people the nephites had done they began to boast in their own strength and began to swear before the heavens that they would avenge themselves of the blood of their brethren who had been slain by their enemies and they did swear by the heavens and also by the throne of god that they would go up to battle against their enemies and would cut them off from the face of the land and it came to pass that i mormon did utterly refuse from this time forth to be a commander and a leader of this people because of their wickedness and abomination behold i had led them notwithstanding their wickedness i had led them many times to battle and had loved them according to the love of god which was in me with all my heart and my soul had been poured out in prayer unto my god all the day long for them nevertheless it was without faith because of the hardness of their hearts and thrice have i delivered them out of the hands of their enemies and they have repented not of their sins and when they had sworn by all that had been forbidden them by our lord and savior jesus christ that they would go up unto their enemies to battle and avenge themselves of the blood of their brethren behold the voice of the lord came unto me saying vengeance is mine and i will repay and because this people repented not after i had delivered them behold they shall be cut off from the face of the earth and it came to pass that i utterly refused to go up against mine enemies and i did even as the lord had commanded me and i did stand as an idle witness to manifest unto the world the things which i saw and heard according to the manifestations of the spirit which had testified of things to come therefore i write unto you gentiles and also unto you house of israel when the work shall commence that ye shall be about to prepare to return to the land of your inheritance yea behold i write unto all the ends of the earth yea unto you twelve tribes of israel who shall be judged according to your works by the twelve whom jesus chose to be his disciples in the land of jerusalem and i write also unto the remnant of this people who shall also be judged by the twelve whom jesus chose in this land and they shall be judged by the other twelve whom jesus chose in the land of jerusalem and these things doth the spirit manifest unto me therefore i write unto you all and for this cause i write unto you that ye may know that ye must all stand before the judgment seat of christ yea every soul who belongs to the whole human family of adam and ye must stand to be judged of your works whether they be good or evil and also that ye may believe the gospel of jesus christ which ye shall have among you and also that the jews the covenant people of the lord shall have other witness besides him whom they saw and heard that jesus whom they slew was the very christ and the very god and i would that i could persuade all ye ends of the earth to repent and prepare to stand before the judgment seat of christ end of fourth nephi to mormon chapter four recording by nicholas james bridgewater recorded in oxford england Mormon chapter 4 up to the book of ether 
of the Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Mormon Chapter 4 up to the book of ether mormon chapter four and now it came to pass that in the three hundred and sixty and third year the nephites did go up with their armies to battle against the lamanites out of the land desolation and it came to pass that the armies of the nephites were driven back again to the land of desolation and while they were yet weary, a fresh army of the Lamanites did come upon them, and they had a sore battle, insomuch that the Lamanites did take possession of the city, Desolation, and did slay many of the Nephites, and did take many prisoners. And the remainder did flee, and join the inhabitants of the city Teancum. Now the city Teancum lay in the borders by the seashore and it was also near the city desolation and it was because the armies of the nephites went up unto the lamanites that they began to be smitten for were it not for that the lamanites could have had no power over them but behold the judgments of god will overtake the wicked and it is by the wicked that the wicked are punished for it is the wicked that stir up the hearts of the children of men unto bloodshed. And it came to pass that the Lamanites did make preparations to come against the city, Teancum. And it came to pass in the three hundred and sixty and fourth year the Lamanites did come against the city, Teancum, that they might take possession of the city, Teancum, also. And it came to pass that they were repulsed and driven back by the Nephites. And when the Nephites saw that they had driven the Lamanites, they did again boast of their own strength, and they went forth in their own might and took possession again of the city, Desolation. And now all these things had been done, and there had been thousands slain on both sides, both the Nephites and the Lamanites. And it came to pass that the three hundred and sixty and sixth year had passed away, and the Lamanites came again upon the Nephites to battle, and yet the Nephites repented not of the evil they had done, but persisted in their wickedness continually. And it is impossible for the tongue to describe, or for man to write a perfect description of the horrible scene of the blood and carnage which was among the people both of the nephites and of the lamanites and every heart was hardened so that they delighted in the shedding of blood continually and there never had been so great wickedness among all the children of lehi nor even among all the house of israel according to the words of the lord as was among this people and it came to pass that the lamanites did take possession of the city desolation and this because their number did exceed the number of the nephites and they did also march forward against the city teancum and did drive the inhabitants forth out of her and did take many prisoners both women and children and did offer them up as sacrifices unto their idol gods and it came to pass that in the three hundred and sixty and seventh year the nephites being angry because the lamanites had sacrificed their women and their children that they did go against the lamanites with exceedingly great anger insomuch that they did beat again the lamanites and drive them out of their lands and the Lamanites did not come again against the Nephites until the three hundred and seventy and fifth year. And in this year, 
they did come down against the nephites with all their powers and they were not numbered because of the greatness of their number and from this time forth did the nephites gain no power over the lamanites but began to be swept off by them even as a dew before the sun and it came to pass that the lamanites did come down against the city desolation and there was an exceedingly sore battle fought in the land desolation in which they did beat the nephites and they fled again from before them and they came to the city boaz and there they did stand against the lamanites with exceeding boldness insomuch that the lamanites did not beat them until they had come again the second time and when they had come the second time the nephites were driven and slaughtered with an exceedingly great slaughter their women and their children were again sacrificed unto idols and it came to pass that the nephites did again flee from before them taking all the inhabitants with them both in towns and villages and now i mormon seeing that the lamanites were about to overthrow the land therefore i did go to the hill shim and did take up all the records which amaron had hid up unto the lord mormon chapter five and it came to pass that i did go forth among the nephites and did repent of the oath which i had made that i would no more assist them and they gave me command again of their armies for they looked upon me as though i could deliver them from their afflictions but behold i was without hope for i knew the judgments of the lord which should come upon them and they repented not of their iniquities but did struggle for their lives without calling upon that being who created them and it came to pass that the lamanites did come against us as we had fled to the city of jordan but behold they were driven back that they did not take the city at that time and it came to pass that they came against us again and we did maintain the city and there were also other cities which were maintained by nephites which strongholds did cut them off when they could not get into the country which lay before us to destroy the inhabitants of our land and it came to pass that whatsoever lands we had passed by and the inhabitants thereof were not gathered in were destroyed by the lamanites and their towns and villages and cities were burned with fire and thus three hundred and seventy and nine years passed away and it came to pass that in the three hundred and eightieth year the lamanites did come again against us to battle and we did stand against them boldly but it was all in vain for so great were their numbers that they did tread the people of the nephites under their feet and it came to pass that we did again take to flight and those whose flight was swifter than the lamanites did escape and those whose flight did not exceed the lamanites were swept down and destroyed and now behold i mormon do not desire to harrow up the souls of men in casting before them such an awful scene of blood and carnage as was laid before mine eyes but i knowing that these things must surely be made known and that all things which are hid must be revealed upon the housetops and also that a knowledge of these things must come unto the remnant of this people and also unto the gentiles who the lord hath said should scatter this people and this people should be counted as naught among them therefore i write a small abridgment daring not to give a full account of the things which i have seen because of the commandment which i have received and also that ye might not have too great sorrow because of the wickedness of this people and now behold this i speak unto their seed and also to the gentiles 
who have care for the house of Israel, that realize and know from whence their blessings come. For I know that such will sorrow for the calamity of the house of Israel. Yea, they will sorrow for the destruction of this people. They will sorrow that this people had not repented that they might have been clasped in the arms of Jesus. Now these things are written unto the remnant of the house of Jacob, and they are written after this manner, because it is known of God that wickedness will not bring them forth unto them, and they are to be hid up unto the Lord, that they may come forth in his own due time. And this is the commandment which I have received, and behold, they shall come forth according to the commandment of the Lord, when he shall see fit in his wisdom. And behold, they shall go unto the unbelieving of the Jews, and for this intent shall they go, that they may be persuaded that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, that the Father may bring about, through his most beloved, his great and eternal purpose in restoring the Jews of all the house of Israel to the land of their inheritance, which the Lord their God hath given them unto the fulfilling of his covenant, and also that the seed of this people may more fully believe his gospel, which shall go forth unto them from the Gentiles. For this people shall be scattered, and shall become a dark, a filthy, and a loathsome people, beyond the description of that which ever hath been amongst us, yea, even that which hath been among the Lamanites, and this because of their unbelief and idolatry. For behold, the Spirit of the Lord hath already ceased to strive with their fathers, and they are without Christ and God in the world, and they are driven out as chaff before the wind. They were once a delightsome people, and they had Christ for their shepherd. Yea, they were led even by God the Father. But now, behold, they are led about by Satan, even as chaff is driven before the wind, or as a vessel is tossed about upon the waves, without sail or anchor, or without anything wherewith to steer her. And even as she is, so are they. And behold, the Lord hath reserved their blessings, which they might have received in the land, for the Gentiles who shall possess the land. But behold, it shall come to pass that they shall be driven and scattered by the Gentiles, and after they have been driven and scattered by the Gentiles, behold, then will the Lord remember the covenant which he made unto Abraham and unto all the house of Israel. And also the Lord will remember the prayers of the righteous which have been put up unto him for them. And then, O ye Gentiles, how can ye stand before the power of God except ye shall repent and turn from your evil ways? Know ye not that ye are in the hands of God? Know ye not that he hath all power, and at his great command the earth shall be rolled together as a scroll? Therefore repent ye, and humble yourselves before him, lest he shall come out in justice against you, lest a remnant of the seed of Jacob shall go forth among you as a lion, and tear you in pieces, and there is none to deliver. Mormon chapter 6 And now I finish my record concerning the destruction of my people, the Nephites. And it came to pass that we did march forth before the Lamanites. And I, Mormon, wrote an epistle unto the king of the Lamanites, and desired of him that he would grant unto us that we might gather together our people unto the land of Cumorah, by a hill which was called Cumorah, and there we could give them battle. And it came to pass 
that the king of the Lamanites did grant unto me the thing which I desired. And it came to pass that we did march forth to the land of Cumorah, and we did pitch our tents around about the hill Cumorah, and it was in a land of many waters, rivers, and fountains. And here we had hoped to gain advantage over the Lamanites. And when three hundred and eighty and four years had passed away, we had gathered in all the remainder of our people unto the land of Cumorah. And it came to pass that when we had gathered in all our people in one to the land of Cumorah, behold, I, Mormon, began to be old, and knowing it to be the last struggle of my people, and having been commanded of the Lord that I should not suffer the records which had been handed down by our fathers, which were sacred, to fall into the hands of the Lamanites, for the Lamanites would destroy them. Therefore I made this record out of the plates of Nephi, and hid up in the hill Cumorah all the records which had been entrusted to me by the hand of the Lord, save it were these few plates which I gave unto my son Moroni. And it came to pass that my people, with their wives and their children, did now behold the armies of the Lamanites marching towards them. And with that awful fear of death, which fills the breasts of all the wicked, did they await to receive them. And it came to pass that they came to battle against us, and every soul was filled with terror because of the greatness of their numbers. And it came to pass that they did fall upon my people with the sword, and with the bow, and with the arrow, and with the axe, and with all manner of weapons of war. And it came to pass that my men were hewn down, yea, even my ten thousand who were with me, and I fell wounded in the midst, and they passed by me, that they did not put an end to my life. And when they had gone through and hewn down all my people, save it were twenty and four of us, among whom was my son Moroni, and we having survived the dead of our people, did behold on the morrow, when the Lamanites had returned unto their camps, from the top of the hill Cumorah, the ten thousand of my people who were hewn down, being led in the front by me. And we also beheld the ten thousand of my people who were led by my son Moroni, and behold, the ten thousand of Gidgidona had fallen, and he also in the midst. And Lema had fallen with his ten thousand, and Gilgal had fallen with his ten thousand, and Limha had fallen with his ten thousand, and Genium had fallen with his ten thousand, and Kamanaiha, and Moroniha, and Antionum, and Shiblom, and Shem, and Josh, had fallen with their ten thousand each. And it came to pass that there were ten more who did fall by the sword with their ten thousand each, yea, even all my people, save it were those twenty and four who were with me, and also a few who had escaped into the south countries, and a few who had deserted over unto the Lamanites had fallen, and their flesh and bones and blood lay upon the face of the earth, being left by the hands of those who slew them, to moulder upon the land, and to crumble, and to return to their mother earth. And my soul was rent with anguish because of the slain of my people, and I cried, O ye fair ones, how could ye have departed from the ways of the Lord? O ye fair ones, how could ye have rejected that Jesus, who stood with open arms to receive you? Behold, if ye had not done this, ye would not have fallen. But behold, ye are fallen, and I mourn your loss.
O ye fair sons and daughters, ye fathers and mothers, ye husbands and wives, ye fair ones, how is it that ye could have fallen? But behold, ye are gone, and my sorrows cannot bring your return. And the day soon cometh that your mortal must put on immortality, and these bodies which are now mouldering in corruption must soon become incorruptible bodies, and then ye must stand before the judgment seat of Christ to be judged according to your works, and if it so be that ye are righteous, then are ye blessed with your fathers who have gone before you. Oh, that ye had repented before this great destruction had come upon you. But behold, ye are gone, and the Father, yea, the eternal Father of heaven, knoweth your state, and he doeth with you according to his justice and mercy. Mormon chapter 7 And now, behold, I would speak somewhat unto the remnant of this people who are spared, if it so be that God may give unto them my words, that they may know of the things of their fathers. Yea, I speak unto you, ye remnant of the house of Israel, and these are the words which I speak. Know ye that ye are of the house of Israel. Know ye that ye must come unto repentance, or ye cannot be saved. Know ye that ye must lay down your weapons of war, and delight no more in the shedding of blood, and take them not again, save it be that God shall command you. Know ye that ye must come to the knowledge of your fathers, and repent of all your sins and iniquities, and believe in Jesus Christ, that he is the Son of God, and that he was slain by the Jews, and by the power of the Father he hath risen again, whereby he hath gained the victory over the grave, and also in him is the sting of death swallowed up, and he bringeth to pass the resurrection of the dead, whereby man must be raised to stand before his judgment seat. And he hath brought to pass the redemption of the world, whereby he that is found guiltless before him at the judgment day hath it given unto him to dwell in the presence of God in his kingdom, to sing ceaseless praises with the choirs above, unto the Father, and unto the Son, and unto the Holy Ghost, which are one God, in a state of happiness which hath no end. Therefore repent, and be baptized in the name of Jesus, and lay hold upon the gospel of Christ, which shall be set before you, not only in this record, but also in the record which shall come unto the Gentiles from the Jews, which record shall come from the Gentiles unto you. For behold, this is written for the intent that ye may believe that, and if ye believe that, ye will believe this also, and if ye believe this, ye will know concerning your fathers, and also the marvelous works which were wrought by the power of God among them. And ye will also know that ye are a remnant of the seed of Jacob. Therefore ye are numbered among the people of the first covenant. And if it so be that ye believe in Christ and are baptized, first with water, then with fire, and with the Holy Ghost, following the example of our Savior, according to that which he hath commanded us, it shall be well with you in the day of judgment. Amen. Mormon chapter 8 Behold, I, Moroni, do finish the record of my father Mormon. Behold, I have but few things to write, which things I have been commanded by my father. And now it came to pass that after the great and tremendous battle at Cumorah, 
behold the nephites who had escaped into the country southward were hunted by the lamanites until they were all destroyed and my father also was killed by them and i even remain alone to write the sad tale of the destruction of my people but behold they are gone and i fulfill the commandment of my father and whether they slay me i know not therefore i will write and hide up the records in the earth and whither i go it mattereth not behold my father hath made this record and he hath written the intent thereof and behold i would write it also if i had room upon the plates but i have not and or i have none for i am alone my father hath been slain in battle and all my kinsfolk and i have not friends nor whither to go and how long the lord will suffer that i may live i know not behold four hundred years have passed away since the coming of our lord and saviour and behold the lamanites have hunted my people the nephites down from city to city and from place to place even until they are no more and great has been their fall yea great and marvellous is the destruction of my people the nephites and behold it is the hand of the lord which hath done it and behold also the lamanites are at war one with another and the whole face of this land is one continual round of murder and bloodshed and no one knoweth the end of the war and now behold i say no more concerning them for there are none save it be the lamanites and robbers that do exist upon the face of the land and there are none that do know the true god save it be the disciples of jesus who did tarry in the land until the wickedness of the people was so great that the lord would not suffer them to remain with the people and whether they be upon the face of the land no man knoweth but behold my father and i have seen them and they have ministered unto us and whoso receiveth this record and shall not condemn it because of the imperfections which are in it the same shall know of greater things than these behold i am moroni and were it possible i would make all things known unto you behold i make an end of speaking concerning this people i am the son of mormon and my father was a descendant of nephi and i am the same who hideth up this record unto the lord the plates thereof are of no worth because of the commandment of the lord for he truly saith that no one shall have them to get gain but the record thereof is of great worth and whoso shall bring it to light him will the lord bless for none can have power to bring it to light save it be given him of god for god gives that it shall be done with an eye single to his glory or the welfare of the ancient and long dispersed covenant people of the lord and blessed be he that shall bring this thing to light for it shall be brought out of darkness unto light according to the word of god yea it shall be brought out of the earth and it shall shine forth out of darkness and come unto the knowledge of the people and it shall be done by the power of god and if there be faults they be the faults of a man but behold we know no fault nevertheless god knoweth all things therefore he that condemneth let him be aware lest he shall be in danger of hell fire and he that saith show unto me or ye shall be smitten let him beware lest he commandeth that which is forbidden of the lord for behold the same that judgeth rashly shall be judged rashly again for according to his works shall his wages be 
therefore he that smiteth shall be smitten again of the lord behold what the scripture says men shall not smite neither shall he judge for judgment is mine saith the lord and vengeance is mine also and i will repay and he that shall breathe out wrath and strifes against the work of the lord and against the covenant people of the lord who are the house of israel and shall say we will destroy the work of the lord and the lord will not remember his covenant which he hath made unto the house of israel the same is in danger to be hewn down and cast into the fire for the eternal purposes of the lord shall roll on until all his promises shall be fulfilled search the prophecies of isaiah behold i cannot write them yea behold i say unto you that those saints who have gone before me who have possessed this land shall cry yea even from the dust will they cry unto the lord and as the lord liveth he will remember the covenant which he hath made with them and he knoweth their prayers that they were in behalf of their brethren and he knoweth their faith for in his name could they remove mountains and in his name could they cause the earth to shake and by the power of his word did they cause prisons to tumble to the earth yea even as the fiery furnace could not harm them neither wild beasts nor poisonous serpents because of the power of his word and behold their prayers were also in behalf of him that the lord should suffer to bring these things forth and no one need say they shall not come for they surely shall for the lord hath spoken it for out of the earth shall they come by the hand of the lord and none can stay it and it shall come in a day when it shall be said that miracles are done away and it shall come even as if one should speak from the dead and it shall come in a day when the blood of saints shall cry unto the lord because of the secret combinations and the works of darkness yea it shall come in a day when the power of god shall be denied and churches become defiled and be lifted up in the pride of their hearts yea even in a day when leaders of churches and teachers shall rise in the pride of their hearts even to the envying of them who belong to their churches yea it shall come in a day when there shall be heard of fires and tempests and vapors of smoke in foreign lands and there shall also be heard of wars rumors of wars and earthquakes in diverse places yea it shall come in a day when there shall be great pollutions upon the face of the earth there shall be murders and robbing and lying and deceivings and whoredoms and all manner of abominations when there shall be many who will say do this or do that and it mattereth not for the lord will uphold such at the last day but woe unto such for they are in the gall of bitterness and in the bonds of iniquity yea it shall come in a day when there shall be churches built up that shall say come unto me and for your money you shall be forgiven of your sins o ye wicked and perverse and stiff-necked people why have ye built up churches unto yourselves to get gain why have ye transfigured the holy word of god that ye might bring damnation upon your souls behold look ye unto the revelations of god for behold the time cometh at that day when all these things must be fulfilled behold the lord hath shown unto me great and marvellous things concerning that which must shortly come at that day 
when these things shall come forth among you behold i speak unto you as if ye were present and yet ye are not but behold jesus christ hath shown you unto me and i know your doing and i know that ye do walk in the pride of your hearts and there are none save a few only who do not lift themselves up in the pride of their hearts unto the wearing of very fine apparel unto envying and strifes and malice and persecutions and all manner of iniquities and your churches yea even every one have become polluted because of the pride of your hearts for behold ye do love money and your substance and your fine apparel and the adorning of your churches more than ye love the poor and the needy the sick and the afflicted o ye pollutions ye hypocrites ye teachers who sell yourselves for that which will canker why have ye polluted the holy church of god why are ye ashamed to take upon you the name of christ why do ye not think that greater is the value of an endless happiness than that misery which never dies because of the praise of the world why do ye adorn yourselves with that which hath no life and yet suffer the hungry and the needy and the naked and the sick and the afflicted to pass by you and notice them not yea why do ye build up your secret abominations to get gain and cause that widows should mourn before the lord and also orphans to mourn before the lord and also the blood of their fathers and their husbands to cry unto the lord from the ground for vengeance upon your heads behold the sword of vengeance hangeth over you and the time soon cometh that he avengeth the blood of the saints upon you for he will not suffer their cries any longer mormon chapter nine and now i speak also concerning those who do not believe in christ behold will ye believe in the day of your visitation behold when the lord shall come yea even that great day when the earth shall be rolled together as a scroll and the elements shall melt with fervent heat yea in that great day when ye shall be brought to stand before the lamb of god then will ye say that there is no god then will ye longer deny the christ or can ye behold the lamb of god do ye suppose that ye shall dwell with him under a consciousness of your guilt do ye suppose that ye could be happy to dwell with that holy being when your souls are racked with a consciousness of guilt that ye have ever abused his laws behold i say unto you that ye would be more miserable to dwell with a holy and just god under a consciousness of your filthiness before him than ye would to dwell with the damned souls in hell for behold when ye shall be brought to see your nakedness before god and also the glory of god and the holiness of jesus christ it will kindle a flame of unquenchable fire upon you o oh, then ye unbelieving turn ye unto the lord cry mightily unto the father in the name of jesus that perhaps ye may be found spotless pure fair and white having been cleansed by the blood of the lamb at that great and last day and again i speak unto you who deny the revelations of god and say that they are done away that there are no revelations nor prophecies nor gifts nor healing nor speaking with tongues and the interpretation of tongues behold i say unto you he that denieth these things knoweth not the gospel of christ yea he has not read the scriptures if so he does not understand them 
For do we not read that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and in him there is no variableness, neither shadow of changing? And now, if ye have imagined up unto yourselves a God who doth vary, and in whom there is shadow of changing, then have ye imagined up unto yourselves a God who is not God of miracles. But behold, I will show unto you a God of miracles, even the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And it is that same God who created the heavens and the earth, and all things that in them are. Behold, he created Adam, and by Adam came the fall of man. And because of the fall of man came Jesus Christ, even the Father and the Son. And because of Jesus Christ came the redemption of man. And because of the redemption of man, which came by Jesus Christ, they are brought back into the presence of the Lord. Yea, this is wherein all men are redeemed, because the death of Christ bringeth to pass the resurrection which bringeth to pass a redemption from an endless sleep, from which sleep all men shall be awakened by the power of God, when the trump shall sound, and they shall come forth, both small and great, and all shall stand before his bar, being redeemed and loosed from this eternal band of death, which death is a temporal death. And then cometh the judgment of the Holy One upon them, and then cometh the time that he that is filthy shall be filthy still, and he that is righteous shall be righteous still, he that is happy shall be happy still, and he that is unhappy shall be unhappy still. And now, O all ye that have imagined up unto yourselves a God who can do no miracles, I would ask of you, have all these things passed of which I have spoken? Has the end come yet? Behold, I say unto you, Nay, and God has not ceased to be a God of miracles. Behold, are not the things that God hath wrought marvellous in our eyes? Yea, and who can comprehend the marvellous works of God? Who shall say that it was not a miracle that by his word the heaven and the earth should be, and by the power of his word man was created of the dust of the earth, and by the power of his word have miracles been wrought? And who shall say that Jesus Christ did not many mighty miracles, and there were many mighty miracles wrought by the hands of the apostles? And if there were miracles wrought then, why has God ceased to be a God of miracles, and yet be an unchangeable being. And behold, I say unto you, he changeth not. If so, he would cease to be God, and he ceaseth not to be God, and is a God of miracles. And the reason why he ceaseth to do miracles among the children of men is because that they dwindle in unbelief and depart from the right way, and know not the God in whom they should trust. Behold, I say unto you, that whoso believeth in Christ, doubting nothing, whatsoever he shall ask the Father in the name of Christ, it shall be granted him. And this promise is unto all, even unto the ends of the earth. For behold, thus said Jesus Christ, the Son of God, unto his disciples who should tarry, yea, and also to all his disciples, in the hearing of the multitude, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. And he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe, in my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. 
and whosoever shall believe in my name doubting nothing unto him will i confirm all my words even unto the ends of the earth and now behold who can stand against the works of the lord who can deny his sayings who will rise up against the almighty power of the lord who will despise the works of the lord who will despise the children of christ behold all ye who are despisers of the works of the lord for ye shall wonder and perish oh then despise not and wonder not but hearken unto the words of the lord and ask the father in the name of jesus for what things soever ye shall stand in need doubt not but be believing and begin as in times of old and come unto the lord with all your heart and work out your own salvation with fear and trembling before him be wise in the days of your probation strip yourselves of all uncleanness ask not that ye may consume it on your lusts but ask with a firmness unshaken that ye will yield to no temptation but that ye will serve the true and living god see that ye are not baptized unworthily see that ye partake not of the sacrament of christ unworthily but see that ye do all things in worthiness and do it in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god and if ye do this and endure to the end ye will in no wise be cast out behold i speak unto you as though i spake from the dead for i know that ye shall have my words condemn me not because of mine imperfection neither my father because of his imperfection neither them who have written before him but rather give thanks unto god that he hath made manifest unto you our imperfections that ye may learn to be more wise than we have been and now behold we have written this record according to our knowledge in the characters which are called among us the reformed egyptian being handed down and altered by us according to our manner of speech and if our plates had been sufficiently large we should have written in hebrew but the hebrew hath been altered by us also and if we could have written in hebrew behold ye would have had no imperfection in our record but the lord knoweth the things which we have written and also that none other people knoweth our language and because that none other people knoweth our language therefore he hath prepared means for the interpretation thereof and these things are written that we may rid our garments of the blood of our brethren who have dwindled in unbelief and behold these things which we have desired concerning our brethren yea even their restoration to the knowledge of christ are according to the prayers of all the saints who have dwelt in the land and may the lord jesus christ grant that their prayers may be answered according to their faith and may god the father remember the covenant which he hath made with the house of israel and may he bless them forever through faith on the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. End of Mormon chapter 4 up to the Book of Ether. Recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. Recorded in Oxford, England. Ether, chapters 1 through 4 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Liberty Stump. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Ether, chapters 1 through 4. The Book of Ether. The record of the Jaredites, taken from the twenty-four plates found by the people of Limhi in the days of King Mosiah. Ether, Chapter 1 
and now i moroni proceed to give an account of those ancient inhabitants who were destroyed by the hand of the lord upon the face of this north country and i take mine account from the twenty and four plates which were found by the people of limhi which is called the book of ether and as i suppose that the first part of this record which speaks concerning the creation of the world and also of adam and an account from that time even to the great tower and whatsoever things transpired among the children of men until that time is had among the jews therefore i do not write those things which transpired from the days of adam until that time but they are had upon the plates and whoso findeth them the same will have power that he may get the full account but behold i give not the full account but a part of the account i give from the tower down until they were destroyed and on this wise do i give the account he that wrote this record was ether and he was a descendant of coriander and coriander was the son of moran and moran was the son of etham and etham was the son of Aha, and Aha was the son of seth and seth was the son of shiblon and shiblon was the son of com and com was the son of coriantum and coriantum was the son of amnagada and amnagada was the son of aaron and aaron was a descendant of heth who was the son of hiartham and hiartham was the son of lib and lib was the son of kish and kish was the son of coram and coram was the son of levi and levi was the son of kim and kim was the son of moriantin and moriantin was a descendant of replakish and replakish was the son of shez and shez was the son of heth and heth was the son of com and com was the son of coriantum and coriantum was the son of emer and emer was the son of omer and omer was the son of shul and shul was the son of kib and kib was the son of ariha who was the son of jared which jared came forth with his brother and their families with some others and their families from the great tower at the time the lord confounded the language of the people and swore in his wrath that they should be scattered upon all the face of the earth and according to the word of the lord the people were scattered and the brother of jared being a large and mighty man and a man highly favoured of the lord jared his brother said unto him cry unto the lord that he will not confound us that we may not understand our words and it came to pass that the brother of jared did cry unto the lord and the lord had compassion upon jared therefore he did not confound the language of jared and jared and his brother were not confounded then jared said unto his brother cry again unto the lord and it may be that he will turn away his anger from them who are our friends that he confound not their language and it came to pass that the brother of jared did cry unto the lord and the lord had compassion upon their friends and their families also that they were not confounded and it came to pass that jared spake again unto his brother saying go and inquire of the lord whether he will drive us out of the land and if he will drive us out of the land cry unto him whither we shall go and who knoweth but the lord will carry us forth into a land which is choice above all the earth and if it so be let us be faithful unto the lord that we may receive it for our inheritance and it came to pass that the brother of jared did cry unto the lord according to that which had been spoken by the mouth of jared and it came to pass that the lord did hear the brother of jared and had compassion upon him and said unto him go to and gather together thy flocks both male and female of every kind and also of the seed of the earth of every kind and thy families and also jared thy brother and his family and also thy friends and their families and the friends of jared and their families and when thou hast done this thou shalt go at the head of them down into the valley which is northward and there will i meet thee and i will go before thee into a land which is choice above all the lands of the earth and there will i bless thee and thy seed and raise up unto me of thy seed and of the seed of thy brother and they who shall go with thee a great nation and there shall be none greater than the nation which i will raise up unto me of thy seed upon all the face of the earth and this i will do unto thee because this long time ye have cried unto me ether chapter two and it came to pass that jared and his brother and their families and also the friends of jared and his brother and their families went down into the valley which was northward and the name of the valley was Nimrad, being called after the mighty hunter, with their flocks which they had gathered together, male and female of every kind. And they did also lay snares and catch fowls of the air, and they did also prepare a vessel in which they did carry with them the fish of the waters. And they did also carry with them Deseret, which by interpretation is a honey-bee, and thus they did carry with them swarms of bees and all manner of that which was upon the face of the land, seeds of every kind. And it came to pass that when they had come down into the valley of Nimrad, the Lord came down and talked with the brother of Jared. And he was in a cloud, and the brother of Jared saw him not. And it came to pass that the Lord commanded them that they should go forth into the wilderness, yea, into that quarter where there never had man been. And it came to pass that the Lord did go before them, and did talk with them as he stood in a cloud, 
and gave directions whether they should travel. And it came to pass that they did travel in the wilderness, and did build barges, in which they did cross many waters, being directed continually by the hand of the Lord. And the Lord would not suffer that they should stop beyond the sea in the wilderness, but he would that they should come forth even into the land of promise, which was choice above all other lands, which the Lord God had preserved for a righteous people. And he had sworn in his wrath unto the brother of Jared, that whoso should possess this land of promise, from that time henceforth and forever, should serve him, the true and only God, or they should be swept off when the fullness of his wrath should come upon them. And now we can behold the decrees of God concerning this land, that it is a land of promise, and whatsoever nation shall possess it shall serve God, or they shall be swept off when the fullness of his wrath shall come upon them. And the fullness of his wrath cometh upon them when they are ripened in iniquity. For behold, this is a land which is choice above all other lands. Wherefore he that doth possess it shall serve God, or shall be swept off. For it is the everlasting decree of God, and it is not until the fullness of iniquity among the children of the land that they are swept off. And this cometh unto you, O ye Gentiles, that ye may know the decrees of God, that ye may repent, and not continue in your iniquities until the fullness come, that ye may not bring down the fullness of the wrath of God upon you, as the inhabitants of the land have hitherto done. Behold, this is a choice land, and whatsoever nation shall possess it shall be free from bondage, and from captivity, and from all other nations under heaven, if they will but serve the God of the land, who is Jesus Christ, who hath been manifested by the things which we have written. And now I proceed with my record, for behold, it came to pass that the Lord did bring Jared and his brethren forth, even to that great sea which divideth the lands. And as they came to the sea, they pitched their tents, and they called the name of the place Moriancomer. And they dwelt in tents, and dwelt in tents upon the seashore, for the space of four years. And it came to pass at the end of four years that the Lord came again unto the brother of Jared, and stood in a cloud, and talked with him. And for the space of three hours did the Lord talk with the brother of Jared, and chastened him, because he remembered not to call upon the name of the Lord. And the brother of Jared repented of the evil which he had done, and did call upon the name of the Lord for his brethren who were with him. And the Lord said unto him, I will forgive thee and thy brethren of their sins, but thou shalt not sin any more, for ye shall remember that my spirit will not always strive with man. Wherefore, if ye will sin until ye are fully ripe, ye shall be cut off from the presence of the Lord. And these are my thoughts upon the land which I shall give you for your inheritance, for it shall be a land choice above all other lands. And the Lord said, Go to work and build, after the manner of barges which ye have hitherto built. And it came to pass that the brother of Jared did go to work, and also his brethren, and built barges after the manner which they had built, according to the instructions of the Lord. And they were small, and they were light upon the water, even like unto the lightness of a fowl upon the water. And they were built after a manner that they were exceedingly tight, even that they would hold water like unto a dish. And the bottom thereof was tight like unto a dish, and the sides thereof were tight like unto a dish, and the ends thereof were peaked, and the top thereof was tight like unto a dish, and the length thereof was the length of a tree, and the door thereof, when it was shut, was tight like unto a dish." And it came to pass that the brother of Jared cried unto the Lord, saying, O Lord, I have performed the work which thou hast commanded me, and I have made the barges according as thou hast directed me. And behold, O Lord, in them there is no light. Whither shall we steer? And also we shall perish, for in them we cannot breathe. Save it is the air which is in them, therefore we shall perish. And the Lord said unto the brother of Jared, Behold, thou shalt make a hole in the top, and also in the bottom. And when thou shalt suffer for air, thou shalt unstop the hole, and receive air. And if it be so that the water come in upon thee, behold, ye shall stop the hole, that ye may not perish in the flood. And it came to pass that the brother of Jared did so, according as the Lord had commanded. And he cried again unto the Lord, saying, O Lord, behold, I have done even as thou hast commanded me, and I have prepared the vessels for my people, and behold, there is no light in them. Behold, O Lord, wilt thou suffer that we shall cross this great water in darkness? And the Lord said unto the brother of Jared, What will ye that I should do, that ye may have light in your vessels? For behold, ye cannot have windows, for they will be dashed in pieces. Neither shall ye take fire with you, for ye shall not go by the light of fire. For behold, ye shall be as a whale in the midst of the sea, for the mountain wave shall dash upon you. Nevertheless, I will bring you up again out of the depths of the sea, for the winds have gone forth out of my mouth, and also the rains and the floods have I sent forth. And behold, I prepare you against these things. For ye cannot cross this great deep, save I prepare you against the waves of the sea, and the winds which have gone forth, and the floods which shall come. Therefore what will ye that I should prepare for you, that ye may have light when ye are swallowed up in the depths of the sea? Ether chapter 3 And it came to pass that the brother of Jared, 
now the number of the vessels which had been prepared was eight, went forth unto the mount, which they called the Mount Shelem, because of its exceeding height, and did molten out of a rock sixteen small stones, and they were white and clear, even as transparent glass. And he did carry them in his hands upon the top of the mount, and cried again unto the Lord, saying, O Lord, thou hast said that we must be encompassed about by the floods. Now behold, O Lord, and do not be angry with thy servant because of his weakness before thee, for we know that thou art holy and dwellest in the heavens, and that we are unworthy before thee, because of the fall our natures have become evil continually. Nevertheless, O Lord, thou hast given us a commandment that we must call upon thee, that from thee we may receive according to our desires. Behold, O Lord, thou hast smitten us because of our iniquity, and hath driven us forth, and for these many years we have been in the wilderness. Nevertheless, thou hast been merciful unto us. O Lord, look upon me in pity, and turn away thine anger from this thy people, and suffer not that they shall go forth across this raging deep in darkness. But behold, these things which I have molten out of the rock. And I know, O Lord, that thou hast all power, and can do whatsoever thou wilt for the benefit of man. Therefore, touch these stones, O Lord, with thy finger, and prepare them that they may shine forth in darkness, and they shall shine forth unto us in the vessels which we have prepared, that we may have light while we cross the sea. Behold, O Lord, thou canst do this. We know that thou art able to show forth great power, which looks small unto the understanding of men. And it came to pass that when the brother of Jared had said these words, Behold, the Lord stretched forth his hand and touched the stones one by one with his finger. And the veil was taken from off the eyes of the brother of Jared, and he saw the finger of the Lord. And it was as the finger of a man, like unto flesh and blood. And the brother of Jared fell down before the Lord, for he was struck with fear. And the Lord saw that the brother of Jared had fallen to the earth, and the Lord said unto him, Arise, why hast thou fallen? And he saith unto the Lord, I saw the finger of the Lord, and I feared lest he should smite me, for I knew not that the Lord had flesh and blood. And the Lord said unto him, Because of thy faith thou hast seen that I shall take upon me flesh and blood, and never has man come before me with such exceeding faith as thou hast. For were it not so, ye could not have seen my finger. Sawest thou more than this? And he answered, Nay, Lord, show thyself unto me. And the Lord said unto him, Believest thou the words which I shall speak? And he answered, Yea, Lord, I know that thou speakest the truth, for thou art a God of truth, and canst not lie. And when he had said these words, behold, the Lord showed himself unto him, and said, Because thou knowest these things, ye are redeemed from the fall. Therefore ye are brought back into my presence. Therefore I show myself unto you. Behold, I am he who was prepared from the foundation of the world to redeem my people. Behold, I am Jesus Christ. I am the Father and the Son. In me shall all mankind have life, and that eternally, even they who shall believe on my name, and they shall become my sons and my daughters. And never have I showed myself unto man whom I have created, for never has man believed in me as thou hast. Seest thou that ye are created after mine own image? Yea, even all men were created in the beginning after mine own image. Behold this body, which ye now behold, is the body of my spirit. And man have I created after the body of my spirit. And even as I appear unto thee to be in the spirit, will I appear unto my people in the flesh. And now, as I Moroni said, I could not make a full account of these things which are written. Therefore it sufficeth me to say that Jesus showed himself unto this man in the spirit, even after the manner and in the likeness of the same body, even as he showed himself unto the Nephites. And he ministered unto him, even as he ministered unto the Nephites. And all this, that this man might know that he was God, because of the many great works which the Lord had shown unto him. And because of the knowledge of this man, he could not be kept from beholding within the veil. And he saw the finger of Jesus, which, when he saw, he fell with fear. For he knew that it was the finger of the Lord, and he had faith no longer, for he knew, nothing doubting. Wherefore, having this perfect knowledge of God, he could not be kept from within the veil. Therefore he saw Jesus, and he did minister unto him. And it came to pass that the Lord said unto the brother of Jared, Behold, thou shalt not suffer these things which ye have seen and heard to go forth into the world, until the time cometh that I shall glorify my name in the flesh. Wherefore ye shall treasure up the things which ye have seen and heard, and show it to no man. And behold, when ye shall come unto me, ye shall write them, and shall seal them up, that no one can interpret them. For ye shall write them in a language that they cannot be read. And behold, these two stones will I give unto thee, and ye shall seal them up also with the things which ye shall write. For behold, the language which ye shall write I have confounded. Wherefore I will cause in my own due time that these stones shall magnify to the eyes of men these things which ye shall write. And when the Lord had said these words, he showed unto the brother of Jared all the inhabitants of the earth which had been, and also all that would be, and he withheld them not from his sight, even unto the ends of the earth. 
for he had said unto him in times before, that if he would believe in him that he could show unto him all things, it should be shown unto him. Therefore the Lord could not withhold anything from him, for he knew that the Lord could show him all things. And the Lord said unto him, Write these things, and seal them up, and I will show them in mine own due time unto the children of men. And it came to pass that the Lord commanded him that he should seal up the two stones which he had received, and show them not, until the Lord should show them unto the children of men. Ether chapter 4 And the Lord commanded the brother of Jared to go down out of the mount from the presence of the Lord, and write the things which he had seen. And they were forbidden to come unto the children of men, until after that he should be lifted up upon the cross. And for this cause did King Mosiah keep them, that they should not come into the world until after Christ should show himself unto the people. And after Christ truly had shown himself unto his people, he commanded that they should be made manifest. And now, after that, they have all dwindled in unbelief, and there is none save it be the Lamanites, and they have rejected the gospel of Christ. Therefore I am commanded that I should hide them up again in the earth. Behold, I have written upon these plates the very things which the brother of Jared saw, and there never were greater things made manifest than those which were made manifest unto the brother of Jared. Wherefore the Lord hath commanded me to write them, and I have written them, and he commanded me that I should seal them up, and he also hath commanded that I should seal up the interpretation thereof. Wherefore I have sealed up the interpreters, according to the commandment of the Lord. For the Lord said unto me, They shall not go forth unto the Gentiles until the day that they shall repent of their iniquity, and become clean before the Lord. And in that day that they shall exercise faith in me, saith the Lord, even as the brother of Jared did, that they may become sanctified in me. Then will I manifest unto them the things which the brother of Jared saw, even to the unfolding unto them all my revelations, saith Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Father of the heavens and of the earth, and all things that in them are. And he that will contend against the word of the Lord, let him be accursed. And he that shall deny these things, let him be accursed. For unto them will I show no greater things, saith Jesus Christ, for I am he who speaketh. And at my command the heavens are opened and are shut, and at my word the earth shall shake, and at my command the inhabitants thereof shall pass away, even so as by fire. And he that believeth not my words believeth not my disciples. And if it so be that I do not speak, judge ye, for ye shall know that it is I that speaketh at the last day. But he that believeth these things which I have spoken, him will I visit with the manifestations of my spirit, and he shall know and bear record. For because of my spirit he shall know that these things are true, for it persuadeth men to do good. And whatsoever thing persuadeth men to do good is of me, for good cometh of none save it be of me. I am the same that leadeth men to all good. He that will not believe my words will not believe me, that I am. And he that will not believe me will not believe the Father who sent me. For behold, I am the Father, I am the light, and the life, and the truth of the world. Come unto me, O ye Gentiles, and I will show unto you the greater things, the knowledge which is hid up because of unbelief. Come unto me, O ye house of Israel, and it shall be made manifest unto you how great things the Father hath laid up for you from the foundation of the world, and it hath not come unto you because of unbelief. Behold, when ye shall rend that veil of unbelief which doth cause you to remain in your awful state of wickedness, and hardness of heart, and blindness of mind, then shall the great and marvellous things which have been hid up from the foundation of the world from you, yea, when ye shall call upon the Father in my name, with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, then shall ye know that the Father hath remembered the covenant which he made unto your fathers, O house of Israel. And then shall my revelations which I have caused to be written by my servant John be unfolded in the eyes of all the people. Remember, when ye see these things, ye shall know that the time is at hand, that they shall be made manifest in the very deed. Therefore, when ye shall receive this record, ye may know that the work of the Father has commenced upon all the face of the land. Therefore, repent, all ye ends of the earth, and come unto me, and believe in my gospel, and be baptized in my name. For he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned, and signs shall follow them that believe in my name. And blessed is he that is found faithful unto my name at the last day, for he shall be lifted up to dwell in the kingdom prepared for him from the foundation of the world. And behold, it is I that hath spoken it. Amen. End of Ether, chapters 1 through 4. Recording by Liberty Stump. Ether, chapters 5 through 9 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Liberty Stump. The Book of Mormon. Translated by Joseph Smith. 
Ether, chapters 5 through 9. Ether, chapter 5. And now I, Moroni, have written the words which were commanded me, according to my memory, and I have told you the things which I have sealed up. Therefore, touch them not, in order that ye may translate, for that thing is forbidden you, except by and by it shall be wisdom in God. And behold, ye may be privileged that ye may show the plates unto those who shall assist to bring forth this work. And unto three shall they be shown by the power of God, wherefore they shall know of a surety that these things are true. And in the mouth of three witnesses shall these things be established, and the testimony of three, and this work, in the which shall be shown forth the power of God, and also his word, of which the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost bear record, and all this shall stand as a testimony against the world at the last day. And if it so be that they repent and come unto the Father in the name of Jesus, they shall be received into the kingdom of God. And now, if I have no authority for these things, judge ye, for ye shall know that I have authority when ye shall see me, and we shall stand before God at the last day. Amen. Ether, chapter 6. And now I, Moroni, proceed to give the record of Jared and his brother. For it came to pass that after the Lord had prepared the stones which the brother of Jared had carried up into the mount, the brother of Jared came down out of the mount, and he did put forth the stones into the vessels which were prepared, one in each end thereof, and behold, they did give light unto the vessels. And thus the Lord caused stones to shine in darkness, to give light unto men, women, and children, that they might not cross the great waters in darkness. And it came to pass that when they had prepared all manner of food, that thereby they might subsist upon the water, and also food for their flocks and herds, and whatsoever beast or animal or fowl that they should carry with them, and it came to pass that when they had done all these things, they got aboard of their vessels or barges, and set forth into the sea, commending themselves unto the Lord their God. And it came to pass that the Lord God caused that there should be a furious wind blow upon the face of the waters, towards the promised land, and thus they were tossed upon the waves of the sea before the wind. And it came to pass that they were many times buried in the depths of the sea, because of the mountain waves which broke upon them, and also the great and terrible tempests which were caused by the fierceness of the wind. And it came to pass that when they were buried in the deep there was no water that could hurt them, their vessels being tight like unto a dish, and also they were tight like unto the ark of Noah. Therefore, when they were encompassed about by many waters, they did cry unto the Lord, and he did bring them forth again upon the top of the waters. And it came to pass that the wind did never cease to blow towards the promised land while they were upon the waters, and thus they were driven forth before the wind. And they did sing praises unto the Lord. Yea, the brother of Jared did sing praises unto the Lord, and he did thank and praise the Lord all the day long. And when the night came, they did not cease to praise the Lord. And thus they were driven forth, and no monster of the sea could break them, neither whale that could mar them, and they did have light continually, whether it was above the water or under the water. And thus they were driven forth three hundred and forty and four days upon the water. And they did land upon the shore of the promised land. And when they had set their feet upon the shores of the promised land, they bowed themselves down upon the face of the land, and did humble themselves before the Lord, and did shed tears of joy before the Lord, because of the multitude of his tender mercies over them. And it came to pass that they went forth upon the face of the land, and began to till the earth. And Jared had four sons, and they were called Jacob, and Gilgah, and Meha, and Orihah. And the brother of Jared also begat sons and daughters. And the friends of Jared and his brother were in number about twenty and two souls. And they also begat sons and daughters before they came to the promised land, and therefore they began to be many. And they were taught to walk humbly before the Lord, and they were also taught from on high. And it came to pass that they began to spread upon the face of the land, and to multiply, and to till the earth, and they did wax strong in the land. And the brother of Jared began to be old, and saw that he must soon go down to the grave. Wherefore he said unto Jared, Let us gather together our people, that we may number them, that we may know of them what they will desire of us before we go down to our graves. And accordingly the people were gathered together. Now the number of the sons and the daughters of the brother of Jared were twenty and two souls. And the number of sons and daughters of Jared were twelve, he having four sons. And it came to pass that they did number their people, and after that they had numbered them, they did desire of them the things which they would that they should do before they went down to their graves. And it came to pass that the people desired of them that they should anoint one of their sons to be a king over them. And now, behold, this was grievous unto them. And the brother of Jared said unto them, Surely this thing leadeth into captivity. But Jared said unto his brother, Suffer them that they may have a king. And therefore he said unto them, Choose ye out from among our sons a king, even whom you will. 
and it came to pass that they chose even the firstborn of the brother of Jared, and his name was Pagag. And it came to pass that he refused, and would not be their king. And the people would that his father should constrain him, but his father would not, and he commanded them that they should constrain no man to be their king. And it came to pass that they chose all the brothers of Pagag, and they would not. And it came to pass that neither would the sons of Jared, even all save it were one. And Orihah was anointed to be king over the people. And he began to reign, and the people began to prosper, and they became exceedingly rich. And it came to pass that Jared died, and his brother also. And it came to pass that Orihah did walk humbly before the Lord, and did remember how great things the Lord had done for his father, and also taught his people how great things the Lord had done for their fathers. Ether, Chapter 7 And it came to pass that Orihah did execute judgment upon the land in righteousness all his days, whose days were exceedingly many. And he begat sons and daughters, yea, he begat thirty and one, among whom were twenty and three sons. And it came to pass that he also begat Kib in his old age. And it came to pass that Kib reigned in his stead, and Kib begat Korahor. And when Korahor was thirty and two years old, he rebelled against his father, and went over and dwelt in the land of Nehor. And he begat sons and daughters, and they became exceedingly fair, wherefore Korahor drew away many people after him. And when he had gathered together an army, he came up unto the land of Moran, where the king dwelt, and took him captive, which brought to pass the saying of the brother of Jared, that they would be brought into captivity. Now the land of Moran, where the king dwelt, was near the land which is called Desolation by the Nephites. And it came to pass that Kib dwelt in captivity, and his people under Korahor his son, until he became exceedingly old. Nevertheless, Kib begat Shul in his old age, while he was yet in captivity. And it came to pass that Shul was angry with his brother, and Shul waxed strong, and became mighty as to the strength of a man, and he was also mighty in judgment. Wherefore he came to the hill Ephraim, and he did molten out of the hill, and made swords out of steel for those whom he had drawn away with him. And after he had armed them with swords, he returned to the city Nehor, and gave battle unto his brother Korahor, by which means he obtained the kingdom and restored it unto his father Kib. And now, because of the thing which Shul had done, his father bestowed upon him the kingdom. Therefore he began to reign in the stead of his father. And it came to pass that he did execute judgment in righteousness, and he did spread his kingdom upon all the face of the land, for the people had become exceedingly numerous. And it came to pass that Shul also begat many sons and daughters. And Korahor repented of the many evils which he had done, wherefore Shul gave him power in his kingdom. And it came to pass that Korahor had many sons and daughters. And among the sons of Korahor there was one whose name was Noah. And it came to pass that Noah rebelled against Shul, the king, and also his father Korahor, and drew away Kohor, his brother, and also all his brethren and many of the people. And he gave battle unto Shul, the king, in which he did obtain the land of their first inheritance, and he became a king over that part of the land. And it came to pass that he gave battle again unto Shul, the king, and he took Shul, the king, and carried him away captive into Moran. And it came to pass, as he was about to put him to death, the sons of Shul crept into the house of Noah by night, and slew him, and broke down the door of the prison, and brought out their father, and placed him upon his throne in his own kingdom. Wherefore the son of Noah did build up his kingdom in his stead. Nevertheless they did not gain power any more over Shul the king, and the people who were under the reign of Shul the king did prosper exceedingly, and wax great. And the country was divided, and there were two kingdoms, the kingdom of Shul, and the kingdom of Kohor, the son of Noah. And Kohor, the son of Noah, caused that his people should give battle unto Shul, in which Shul did beat them, and did slay Kohor. And now Kohor had a son who was called Nimrad, and Nimrad gave up the kingdom of Kohor unto Shul, and he did gain favor in the eyes of Shul. Wherefore Shul did bestow great favors upon him, and he did do in the kingdom of Shul according to his desires. And also in the reign of Shul there came prophets among the people, who were sent from the Lord, prophesying that the wickedness and idolatry of the people was bringing a curse upon the land, and they should be destroyed if they did not repent. And it came to pass that the people did revile against the prophets, and did mock them. And it came to pass that King Shul did execute judgment against all those who did revile against the prophets. And he did execute a law throughout all the land, which gave power unto the prophets, that they should go whithersoever they would. And by this cause the people were brought unto repentance." And because the people did repent of their iniquities and idolatries, the Lord did spare them, and they began to prosper again in the land. And it came to pass that Shul begat sons and daughters in his old age. And there were no more wars in the days of Shul, 
and he remembered the great things that the Lord had done for his fathers in bringing them across the great deep into the promised land. Wherefore, he did execute judgment and righteousness all his days. Ether, Chapter 8 And it came to pass that he begat Omer, and Omer reigned in his stead, and Omer begat Jared, and Jared begat sons and daughters. And Jared rebelled against his father, and came and dwelt in the land of Heth, and it came to pass that he did flatter many people because of his cunning words, until he had gained the half of the kingdom. And when he had gained the half of the kingdom, he gave battle unto his father, and he did carry away his father into captivity, and did make him serve in captivity. And now in the days of the reigns of Omer he was in captivity the half of his days. And it came to pass that he begat sons and daughters, among whom were Ezram and Coriantumr. And they were exceedingly angry because of the doings of Jared their brother, insomuch that they did raise an army, and gave battle unto Jared. And it came to pass that they did give battle unto him by night. And it came to pass that when they had slain the army of Jared, they were about to slay him also. And he pled with them that they would not slay him, and he would give up the kingdom unto his father. And it came to pass that they did grant unto him his life. And now Jared became exceedingly sorrowful because of the loss of the kingdom. For he had set his heart upon the kingdom, and upon the glory of the world. Now the daughter of Jared, being exceedingly expert, and seeing the sorrows of her father, thought to devise a plan whereby she could redeem the kingdom unto her father. Now the daughter of Jared was exceedingly fair, and it came to pass that she did talk with her father, and said unto him, Whereby hath my father so much sorrow? Hath he not read the record which our fathers brought across the great deep? Behold, is there not an account concerning them of old, that they by their secret plans did obtain kingdoms and great glory? And now, therefore, let my father send for Achish, the son of Kimnor. And behold, I am fair, and I will dance before him, and I will please him, that he will desire me to wife. Wherefore, if he shall desire of thee that ye shall give unto him me to wife, then shall ye say, I will give her if ye will bring unto me the head of my father, the king. And now Omer was a friend to Achish. Wherefore, when Jared had sent for Achish, the daughter of Jared danced before him, that she pleased him, insomuch that he desired her to wife. And it came to pass that he said unto Jared, Give her unto me to wife. And Jared said unto him, I will give her unto you, if ye will bring unto me the head of my father, the king. And it came to pass that Achish gathered in unto the house of Jared all his kinsfolk, and said unto them, Will ye swear unto me that ye will be faithful unto me in the thing which I shall desire of you? And it came to pass that they all swear unto him, by the God of heaven, and also by the heavens, and also by the earth, and by their heads, that whoso should vary from the assistance which Achish desired should lose his head, and whoso should divulge whatsoever thing Achish made known unto them, the same should lose his life. And it came to pass that thus they did agree with Achish, and Achish did administer unto them the oaths which were given by them of old who also sought power, which had been handed down even from Cain, who was a murderer from the beginning. And they were kept up by the power of the devil to administer these oaths unto the people, to keep them in darkness, to help such as sought power to gain power, and to murder, and to plunder, and to lie, and to commit all manner of wickedness and whoredoms. And it was the daughter of Jared who put it into his heart to search up these things of old, and Jared put it into the heart of Achish. Wherefore Achish administered it unto his kindred and friends, leading them away by fair promises to do whatsoever thing he desired. And it came to pass that they formed a secret combination, even as they of old, which combination is most abominable and wicked above all in the sight of God. For the Lord worketh not in secret combinations, neither doth he will that man should shed blood, but in all things hath forbidden it from the beginning of man. And now I, Moroni, do not write the manner of their oaths and combinations, for it hath been made known unto me that they are had among all people, and they are had among the Lamanites." And they have caused the destruction of this people of whom I am now speaking, and also the destruction of the people of Nephi. And whatsoever nation shall uphold such secret combinations to get power and gain, until they shall spread over the nation, behold, they shall be destroyed. For the Lord will not suffer that the blood of his saints, which shall be shed by them, shall always cry unto him from the ground for vengeance upon them, and yet he avenge them not. Wherefore, O ye Gentiles, it is wisdom in God that these things should be shown unto you, that thereby ye may repent of your sins, and suffer not that these murderous combinations shall get above you, which are built up to get power and gain, and the work, yea, even the work of destruction, come upon you. Yea, even the sword of the justice of the eternal God shall fall upon you, to your overthrow and destruction, if ye shall suffer these things to be. Wherefore the Lord commandeth you, 
when ye shall see these things come among you, that ye shall awake to a sense of your awful situation, because of this secret combination which shall be among you, or woe be unto it, because of the blood of them who have been slain. For they cry from the dust for vengeance upon it, and also upon those who built it up. For it cometh to pass, that whoso buildeth it up seeketh to overthrow the freedom of all lands, nations, and countries. And it bringeth to pass the destruction of all people, for it is built up by the devil, who is the father of all lies, even that same liar who beguiled our first parents, yea, even that same liar who hath caused man to commit murder from the beginning, who hath hardened the hearts of men, that they have murdered the prophets, and stoned them, and cast them out from the beginning. Wherefore I, Moroni, am commanded to write these things, that evil may be done away, and that the time may come that Satan may have no power upon the hearts of the children of men, but that they may be persuaded to do good continually, that they may come unto the fountain of all righteousness, and be saved. Ether, Chapter 9 And now I, Moroni, proceed with my record. Therefore, behold, it came to pass, that because of the secret combinations of Achish and his friends, behold, they did overthrow the kingdom of Omer. Nevertheless the Lord was merciful unto Omer, and also to his sons and to his daughters who did not seek his destruction. And the Lord warned Omer in a dream that he should depart out of the land. Wherefore Omer departed out of the land with his family, and travelled many days, and came over and passed by the hill of Shim, and came over by the place where the Nephites were destroyed, and from thence eastward, and came to a place which was called Ablam, by the seashore. And there he pitched his tent, and also his sons and his daughters, and all his household, save it were Jared and his family. And it came to pass that Jared was anointed king over the people, by the hand of wickedness, and he gave unto Achish his daughter to wife. And it came to pass that Achish sought the life of his father-in-law, and he applied unto those whom he had sworn by the oath of the ancients, and they obtained the head of his father-in-law, as he sat upon his throne, giving audience to his people. For so great had been the spreading of this wicked and secret society, that it had corrupted the hearts of all the people. Therefore Jared was murdered upon his throne, and Achish reigned in his stead. And it came to pass that Achish began to be jealous of his son. Therefore he shut him up in prison, and kept him upon little or no food, until he had suffered death. And now the brother of him that suffered death, and his name was Nimrah, was angry with his father, because of that which his father had done unto his brother. And it came to pass that Nimrah gathered together a small number of men, and fled out of the land, and came over and dwelt with Omer. And it came to pass that Achish begat other sons, and they won the hearts of the people, notwithstanding they had sworn unto him to do all manner of iniquity, according to that which he desired. Now the people of Achish were desirous for gain, even as Achish was desirous for power. Wherefore the sons of Achish did offer them money, by which means they drew away the more part of the people after them. And there began to be a war between the sons of Achish and Achish, which lasted for the space of many years, yea, unto the destruction of nearly all the people of the kingdom, yea, even all, save it were thirty souls, and they who fled with the house of Omer. Wherefore Omer was restored again to the land of his inheritance. And it came to pass that Omer began to be old. Nevertheless, in his old age, he begat Emer, and he anointed Emer to be king to reign in his stead. And after that he had anointed Emer to be king, he saw peace in the land for the space of two years, and he died, having seen exceedingly many days, which were full of sorrow. And it came to pass that Emer did reign in his stead, and did fill the steps of his father. And the Lord began again to take the curse from off the land, and the house of Emer did prosper exceedingly under the reign of Emer, and in the space of sixty and two years they had become exceedingly strong, insomuch that they became exceedingly rich, having all manner of fruit, and of grain, and of silks, and of fine linen, and of gold, and of silver, and of precious things, and also all manner of cattle, of oxen, and cows, and of sheep, and of swine, and of goats, and also many other kinds of animals which were useful for the food of man. And they also had horses and asses, and there were elephants and curlums and cumums, all of which were useful unto man, and more especially the elephants and curlums and cumums. And thus the Lord did pour out his blessings upon this land, which was choice above all other lands. And he commanded that whoso should possess the land should possess it unto the Lord, or they should be destroyed when they were ripened in iniquity. For upon such, saith the Lord, I will pour out the fullness of my wrath." And Emer did execute judgment in righteousness all his days. And he begat many sons and daughters. And he begat Coriantum. And he anointed Coriantum to reign in his stead. And after he had anointed Coriantum to reign in his stead, he lived four years, 
and he saw peace in the land. Yea, and he even saw the Son of Righteousness, and did rejoice and glory in his day, and he died in peace. And it came to pass that Coriantum did walk in the steps of his father, and did build many mighty cities, and did administer that which was good unto his people in all his days. And it came to pass that he had no children, even until he was exceedingly old. And it came to pass that his wife died, being an hundred and two years old. And it came to pass that Coriantum took to wife, in his old age, a young maid, and begat sons and daughters, wherefore he lived until he was an hundred and forty and two years old. And it came to pass that he begat Combe, and Combe reigned in his stead, and he reigned forty and nine years, and he begat Heth, and he also begat other sons and daughters. And the people had spread again over all the face of the land, and there began again to be an exceedingly great wickedness upon the face of the land. And Heth began to embrace the secret plans again of old, to destroy his father. And it came to pass that he did dethrone his father, for he slew him with his own sword, and he did reign in his stead. And there came prophets in the land again, crying repentance unto them, that they must prepare the way of the Lord, or there should come a curse upon the face of the land. Yea, even there should be a great famine, in which they should be destroyed if they did not repent. But the people believed not the words of the prophets, and they cast them out, and some of them they cast into pits, and left them to perish. And it came to pass that they did all these things according to the commandment of the king, Heth. And it came to pass that there began to be a great dearth upon the land, and the inhabitants began to be destroyed exceedingly fast because of the dearth, for there was no rain upon the face of the earth. And there came forth poisonous serpents also upon the face of the land, and did poison many people. And it came to pass that their flocks began to flee before the poisonous serpents towards the land southward, which was called by the Nephites Zarahemla, and it came to pass that there were many of them which did perish by the way. Nevertheless, there were some which fled into the land southward. And it came to pass that the Lord did cause the serpents that they should pursue them no more, but that they would hedge up the way that the people could not pass, that whoso should attempt to pass might fall by the poisonous serpents. And it came to pass that the people did follow the course of the beasts, and did devour the carcasses of them which fell by the way, until they had devoured them all. Now when the people saw that they must perish, they began to repent of their iniquities, and cry unto the Lord. And it came to pass, that when they had humbled themselves sufficiently before the Lord, he did send rain upon the face of the earth, and the people began to revive again, and there began to be fruit in the north countries, and in all the countries round about. And the Lord did show forth his power unto them, in preserving them from famine. End of Ether, chapters 5 through 9 Recording by Liberty Stump Ether, chapters 10 through 13 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Ether, chapters 10 through 13. Ether, chapter 10. And it came to pass that Shez, who was a descendant of Heth, for Heth had perished by the famine, and all his household, save it were Shez, wherefore Shez began to build up again a broken people. And it came to pass that Shez did remember the destruction of his fathers, and he did build up a righteous kingdom, for he remembered what the Lord had done in bringing Jared and his brother across the deep, and he did walk in the ways of the Lord and he begat sons and daughters. And his eldest son, whose name was Shez, did rebel against him. Nevertheless, Shez was smitten by the hand of a robber because of his exceeding riches, which brought peace again unto his father. And it came to pass that his father did build up many cities upon the face of the land, and the people began again to spread over all the face of the land. And Shez did live to an exceedingly old age, and he begat Riplakish, and he died. And Riplakish, reigned in his stead. And it came to pass that Riplakish did not do that which was right in the sight of the Lord. For he did have many wives and concubines, and did lay that upon men's shoulders which was grievous to be borne. Yea, he did tax them with heavy taxes, and with the taxes he did build many spacious buildings. And he did erect him an exceedingly beautiful throne, and he did build many prisons, 
and whoso would not be subject unto taxes he did cast into prison, and whoso was not able to pay taxes he did cast into prison, and he did cause that they should labor continually for their support, and whoso refused to labor he did cause to be put to death. Wherefore he did obtain all his fine work, yea, even his fine gold he did cause to be refined in prison, and all manner of fine workmanship he did cause to be wrought in prison, and it came to pass that he did afflict the people with his whoredoms and abominations. And when he had reigned for the space of forty and two years, the people did rise up in rebellion against him, and there began to be war again in the land, insomuch that Riplakish was killed, and his descendants were driven out of the land. And it came to pass, after the space of many years, Morianton, he being a descendant of Riplakish, gathered together an army of outcasts, and went forth and gave battle unto the people, and he gained power over many cities, and the war became exceedingly sore, and did last for the space of many years, and he did gain power over all the land, and did establish himself king over all the land. And after that he had established himself king, he did ease the burden of the people, by which he did gain favor in the eyes of the people, and they did anoint him to be their king. And he did do justice unto the people, but not unto himself, because of his many whoredoms, wherefore he was cut off from the presence of the Lord. And it came to pass that Morianton built up many cities, and the people became exceedingly rich under his reign, both in buildings, and in gold and silver, and in raising grain, and in flocks, and herds, and such things which had been restored unto them. And Morianton did live to an exceedingly great age, and then he begat Kim, and Kim did reign in the stead of his father, and he did reign eight years, and his father died. And it came to pass that Kim did not reign in righteousness, wherefore he was not favored of the Lord. And his brother did rise up in rebellion against him, by which he did bring him into captivity. And he did remain in captivity all his days, and he begat sons and daughters in captivity. And in his old age he begat Levi, and he died. And it came to pass that Levi did serve in captivity after the death of his father for the space of forty and two years. And he did make war against the king of the land, by which he did obtain unto himself the kingdom. And after he had obtained unto himself the kingdom, he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, and the people did prosper in the land. And he did live to a good old age, and begat sons and daughters. And he also begat Coram, whom he anointed king in his stead. And it came to pass that Coram did that which was good in the sight of the Lord all his days, and he begat many sons and daughters. And after he had seen many days he did pass away, even like unto the rest of the earth, and Kish reigned in his stead. And it came to pass that Kish passed away also, and Lib reigned in his stead. And it came to pass that Lib also did that which was good in the sight of the Lord. And in the days of Lib the poisonous serpents were destroyed. Wherefore they did go into the land southward, to hunt food for the people of the land. For the land was covered with animals of the forest, and Lib also himself became a great hunter. And they built a great city by the narrow neck of land, by the place where the sea divides the land. And they did preserve the land southward for a wilderness, to get game. And the whole face of the land northward was covered with inhabitants. And they were exceedingly industrious and they did buy and sell and traffic one with another, that they might get gain. And they did work in all manner of ore, and they did make gold and silver and iron and brass and all manner of metals, and they did dig it out of the earth. Wherefore they did cast up mighty heaps of earth to get ore of gold and of silver and of iron and of copper. And they did work all manner of fine work. And they did have silks and fine twined linen, and they did work all manner of cloth, that they might clothe themselves from their nakedness. And they did make all manner of tools to till the earth, both to plough and to sow, to reap and to hoe, and also to thrash. And they did make all manner of tools, with which they did work their beasts. And they did make all manner of weapons of war. And they did work all manner of work of exceedingly curious workmanship. And never could be a people more blessed than were they and more prospered by the hand of the Lord. And they were in a land that was choice above all lands, for the Lord had spoken it. And it came to pass that Lib did live many years, and begat sons and daughters. And he also begat Hearthom, 
And it came to pass that Hearthom reigned in the stead of his father, and when Hearthom had reigned twenty and four years, behold, the kingdom was taken away from him, and he served many years in captivity, yea, even all the remainder of his days. And he begat Heth, and Heth lived in captivity all his days, and Heth begat Aaron, and Aaron dwelt in captivity all his days. And he begat Amnagada, and Amnagada also dwelt in captivity all his days, and he begat Coriantum, and Coriantum dwelt in captivity all his days, and he begat Com. And it came to pass that Com drew away the half of the kingdom, and he reigned over the half of the kingdom forty and two years. And he went to battle against the king Amgid, and they fought for the space of many years, during which time Com gained power over Amgid and obtained power over the remainder of the kingdom. And in the days of Com there began to be robbers in the land, and they adopted the old plans, and administered oaths after the manner of the ancients, and sought again to destroy the kingdom. Now Com did fight against them much, nevertheless he did not prevail against them. Ether chapter 11 and there came also in the days of Com many prophets, and prophesied of the destruction of that great people, except they should repent, and turn unto the Lord, and forsake their murders and wickedness. And it came to pass that the prophets were rejected by the people, and they fled unto Com for protection, for the people sought to destroy them. And they prophesied unto Com many things, and he was blessed in all the remainder of his days. And he lived to a good old age, and begat Shiblom, and Shiblom reigned in his stead, and the brother of Shiblom rebelled against him, and there began to be an exceedingly great war in all the land. And it came to pass that the brother of Shiblom caused that all the prophets who prophesied of the destruction of the people should be put to death. And there was great calamity in all the land, for they had testified that a great curse should come upon the land, and also upon the people, and that there should be a great destruction among them, such an one as never had been upon the face of the earth, and their bones should become as heaps of earth upon the face of the land, except they should repent of their wickedness. And they hearkened not unto the voice of the Lord, because of their wicked combinations, wherefore there began to be wars and contentions in all the land, and also many famines and pestilences, insomuch that there was a great destruction, such an one as never had been known upon the face of the earth, and all this came to pass in the days of Shiblom. And the people began to repent of their iniquity, and inasmuch as they did, the Lord did have mercy on them. And it came to pass that Shiblom was slain, and Seth was brought into captivity, and did dwell in captivity all his days. And it came to pass that Ahah his son did obtain the kingdom, and he did reign over the people all his days and he did do all manner of iniquity in his days, by which he did cause the shedding of much blood, and few were his days. And Etham, being a descendant of Ahah, did obtain the kingdom, and he also did do that which was wicked in his days. And it came to pass that in the days of Etham there came many prophets, and prophesied again unto the people, yea, they did prophesy that the Lord would utterly destroy them from off the face of the earth, except they repented of their iniquities. And it came to pass that the people hardened their hearts, and would not hearken unto their words. And the prophets mourned and withdrew from among the people. And it came to pass that Etham did execute judgment and wickedness all his days, and he begat Moran. And it came to pass that Moran did reign in his stead, and Moran did that which was wicked before the Lord. And it came to pass that there arose a rebellion among the people because of that secret combination which was built up to get power and gain. And there arose a mighty man among them in iniquity, and gave battle unto Moran, in the which he did overthrow the half of the kingdom, and he did maintain the half of the kingdom for many years. And it came to pass that Moran did overthrow him, and did obtain the kingdom again. And it came to pass that there arose another mighty man, and he was a descendant of the brother of Jared. And it came to pass that he did overthrow Moran, and obtain the kingdom, wherefore Moran dwelt in captivity all the remainder of his days, and he begat Coriantor. And it came to pass that Coriantor dwelt in captivity all his days. And in the days of Coriantor there also came many prophets, and prophesied of great and marvelous things, and cried repentance unto the people, 
and except they should repent, the Lord God would execute judgment against them to their utter destruction, and that the Lord God would send or bring forth another people to possess the land by his power, after the manner by which he brought their fathers. And they did reject all the words of the prophets, because of their secret society and wicked abominations. And it came to pass that Coriander begat Ether, and he died, having dwelt in captivity all his days. Ether chapter 12 And it came to pass that the days of Ether were in the days of Coriantumr, and Coriantumr was king over all the land. And Ether was a prophet of the Lord. Wherefore Ether came forth in the days of Coriantumr, and began to prophesy unto the people, for he could not be restrained because of the Spirit of the Lord which was in him. For he did cry from the morning even until the going down of the sun, exhorting the people to believe in God unto repentance, lest they should be destroyed, saying unto them that by faith all things are fulfilled. Wherefore, whoso believeth in God might with surety hope for a better world, yea, even a place at the right hand of God, which hope cometh of faith, maketh an anchor to the souls of men, which would make them sure and steadfast, always abounding in good works, being led to glorify God. And it came to pass that Ether did prophesy great and marvelous things unto the people, which they did not believe, because they saw them not. And now I, Moroni, would speak somewhat concerning these things. I would show unto the world that faith is things which are hoped for and not seen. Wherefore dispute not, because ye see not. For ye receive no witness until after the trial of your faith. For it was by faith that Christ showed himself unto our fathers, after he had risen from the dead. And he showed not himself unto them until after they had faith in him. Wherefore it must needs be that some had faith in him. For he showed himself not unto the world. But because of the faith of men he has shown himself unto the world, and glorified the name of the Father, and prepared a way that thereby others might be partakers of the heavenly gift, that they might hope for those things which they have not seen. Wherefore, ye may also have hope, and be partakers of the gift, if ye will but have faith. Behold, it was by faith that they of old were called after the holy order of God. Wherefore, by faith was the law of Moses given. But in the gift of his Son hath God prepared a more excellent way, and it is by faith that it hath been fulfilled. For if there be no faith among the children of men, God can do no miracle among them, wherefore he showed not himself until after their faith. Behold, it was the faith of Alma and Amulek that caused the prison to tumble to the earth. Behold, it was the faith of Nephi and Lehi that wrought the change upon the Lamanites, that they were baptized with fire and with the Holy Ghost. Behold, it was the faith of Ammon and his brethren, which wrought so great a miracle among the Lamanites. Yea, and even all they who wrought miracles wrought them by faith, even those who were before Christ and also those who were after and it was by faith that the three disciples obtained a promise that they should not taste of death. And they obtained not the promise until after their faith. And neither at any time hath any wrought miracles until after their faith. Wherefore, they first believed in the Son of God. And there were many whose faith was so exceedingly strong, even before Christ came, who could not be kept from within the veil, but truly saw with their eyes the things which they had beheld with an eye of faith, and they were glad. And behold, we have seen in this record that one of these was the brother of Jared. For so great was his faith in God, that when God put forth his finger, he could not hide it from the sight of the brother of Jared, because of his word which he had spoken unto him, which word he had obtained by faith. And after the brother of Jared had beheld the finger of the Lord, because of the promise which the brother of Jared had obtained by faith, the Lord could not withhold anything from his sight. Therefore he showed him all things, for he could no longer be kept without the veil. And it is by faith that my fathers have obtained the promise that these things should come unto their brethren through the Gentiles. Therefore the Lord hath commanded me, yea, even Jesus Christ. And I said unto him, Lord, the Gentiles will mock at these things because of our weakness in writing. For, Lord, thou hast made us mighty in word by faith, 
but thou hast not made us mighty in writing. For thou hast made all this people that they could speak much, because of the Holy Ghost which thou hast given them. And thou hast made us that we could write but little, because of the awkwardness of our hands. Behold, thou hast not made us mighty in writing, like unto the brother of Jared. For thou madest him that the things which he wrote were mighty, even as thou art, unto the overpowering of man to read them. Thou hast also made our words powerful and great, even that we cannot write them. Wherefore, when we write, we behold our weakness, and stumble because of the placing of our words, and I fear lest the Gentiles shall mock at our words. And when I had said this, the Lord spake unto me, saying, Fools mock, but they shall mourn, and my grace is sufficient for the meek, that they shall take no advantage of your weakness. And if men come unto me, I will show unto them their weakness. I give unto men weakness, that they may be humble. And my grace is sufficient for all men that humble themselves before me. For if they humble themselves before me, and have faith in me, then will I make weak things become strong unto them. Behold, I will show unto the Gentiles their weakness, and I will show unto them that faith, hope, and charity bringeth unto me the fountain of all righteousness. And I, Moroni, having heard these words, was comforted, and said, O Lord, thy righteous will be done, for I know that thou workest unto the children of men according to their faith. For the brother of Jared said unto the mountain Zeran, Remove, and it was removed. And if he had not had faith, it would not have moved. Wherefore thou workest after men have faith. For thus didst thou manifest thyself unto thy disciples, for after they had faith, and did speak in thy name, thou didst show thyself unto them in great power. And I also remember that thou hast said that thou hast prepared a house for man, yea, even among the mansions of my father, in which man might have a more excellent hope. Wherefore man must hope, or he cannot receive an inheritance in the place which thou hast prepared. And again I remember that thou hast said that thou hast loved the world, even unto the laying down of thy life for the world, that thou mightest take it again to prepare a place for the children of men. And now I know that this love which thou hast had for the children of men is charity. Wherefore, except men shall have charity, they cannot inherit that place which thou hast prepared in the mansions of thy father. Wherefore, I know by this thing which thou hast said, that if the Gentiles have not charity because of our weakness, that thou wilt prove them and take away their talent, yea, even that which they have received, and give unto them who shall have more abundantly. And it came to pass that I prayed unto the Lord that he would give unto the Gentiles grace, that they might have charity. And it came to pass that the Lord said unto me, If they have not charity, it mattereth not unto thee. Thou hast been faithful. Wherefore thy garments shall be made clean, and because thou hast seen thy weakness, thou shalt be made strong, even unto the sitting down in the place which I have prepared in the mansions of my father. And now I, Moroni, bid farewell unto the Gentiles, yea, and also unto my brethren whom I love, until we shall meet before the judgment seat of Christ, where all men shall know that my garments are not spotted with your blood. And then shall we know that I have seen Jesus, and that he hath talked with me face to face, and that he told me in plain humility, even as a man telleth another in mine own language concerning these things. And only a few have I written, because of my weakness in writing. And now I would commend you to seek this Jesus, of whom the prophets and apostles have written, that the grace of God the Father and also the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost which beareth record of them may be and abide in you for ever. Amen. Ether chapter 13 And now I, Moroni, proceed to finish my record concerning the destruction of the people of whom I have been writing. For behold, they rejected all the words of Ether, for he truly told them of all things from the beginning of man, and that after the waters had receded from off the face of this land it became a choice land above all other lands, a chosen land of the Lord, wherefore the Lord would have that all men should serve him who dwell upon the face thereof and that it was the place of the new Jerusalem which should come down out of heaven, and the holy sanctuary of the Lord. 
Behold, Ether saw the days of Christ, and he spake concerning a new Jerusalem upon this land, and he spake also concerning the house of Israel, and the Jerusalem from whence Lehi should come after it should be destroyed, it should be built up again, a holy city unto the Lord. Wherefore it could not be a new Jerusalem, for it had been in a time of old, but it should be built up again, and become a holy city of the Lord, and it should be built unto the house of Israel and that a new jerusalem should be built upon this land unto the remnant of the seed of joseph for which things there has been a type for as joseph brought his father down into the land of egypt even so he died there wherefore the lord brought a remnant of the seed of joseph out of the land of jerusalem that he might be merciful unto the seed of joseph that they should perish not even as he was merciful unto the father of joseph that he should perish not wherefore the remnant of the house of joseph shall be built upon this land and it shall be a land of their inheritance and they shall build up a holy city unto the lord like unto the jerusalem of old and they shall no more be confounded until the end come when the earth shall pass away and there shall be a new heaven and a new earth and they shall be like unto the old save the old have passed away and all things have become new and then cometh the new Jerusalem, and blessed are they who dwell therein, for it is they whose garments are white through the blood of the Lamb, and they are they who are numbered among the remnant of the seed of Joseph, who were of the house of Israel. And then also cometh the Jerusalem of old, and the inhabitants thereof. Blessed are they, for they have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, and they are they who were scattered and gathered in from the four quarters of the earth, and from the north countries, and are partakers of the fulfilling of the covenant which god made with their father abraham and when these things come bringeth to pass the scripture which saith there are they who were first who shall be last and there are they who were last who shall be first and i was about to write more but i am forbidden but great and marvellous were the prophecies of ether but they esteemed him as not and cast him out and he hid himself in the cavity of a rock by day and by night he went forth viewing the things which should come upon the people and as he dwelt in the cavity of a rock he made the remainder of his record viewing the destructions which came upon the people by night and it came to pass that in that same year in which he was cast out from among the people there began to be a great war among the people for there were many who rose up who were mighty men and sought to destroy coriantumr by their secret plans of wickedness of which hath been spoken and now Coriantumr, having studied himself in all the arts of war, and all the cunning of the world, wherefore he gave battle unto them who sought to destroy him. But he repented not, neither his fair sons nor daughters, neither the fair sons and daughters of Kohor, neither the fair sons and daughters of Korahor. And in fine, there were none of the fair sons and daughters upon the face of the whole earth who repented of their sins. Wherefore it came to pass, that in the first year that Ether dwelt in the cavity of a rock, there were many people who were slain by the sword of those secret combinations, fighting against Coriantumr, that they might obtain the kingdom. And it came to pass, that the sons of Coriantumr fought much, and bled much. And in the second year the word of the Lord came to Ether, that he should go and prophesy unto Coriantumr, that, if he would repent, and all his household, the Lord would give unto him his kingdom, and spare the people. Otherwise they should be destroyed, and all his household, save it were himself. And he should only live to see the fulfilling of the prophecies which had been spoken concerning another people receiving the land for their inheritance. And Coriantumr should receive a burial by them, and every soul should be destroyed, save it were Coriantumr. And it came to pass that Coriantumr repented not, neither his household, neither the people, and the wars ceased not, and they sought to kill Ether, but he fled from before them and hid again in the cavity of the rock. And it came to pass that there arose up Sherod, and he also gave battle unto Coriantumr, and he did beat him, insomuch that in the third year he did bring him into captivity. And the son of Coriantumr in the fourth year did beat Sherod, and did obtain the kingdom again unto their father. Now there began to be a war upon all the face of the land, every man with his band fighting for that which he desired. 
and there were robbers, and in fine all manner of wickedness upon all the face of the land. And it came to pass that Coriantumr was exceedingly angry with Sherod, and he went against him with his armies to battle, and they did meet in great anger, and they did meet in the valley of Gilgal, and the battle became exceedingly sore. And it came to pass that Sherod fought against him for the space of three days, and it came to pass that Coriantumr beat him, and did pursue him until he came to the plains of Heshlon. And it came to pass that Sherod gave him battle again upon the plains, and behold, he did beat Coriantumr, and drove him back again to the valley of Gilgal. And Coriantumr gave Sherod battle again in the valley of Gilgal, in which he beat Sherod and slew him. And Sherod wounded Coriantumr in his thigh, that he did not go to battle again for the space of two years, in which time all the people upon the face of the land were shedding blood, and there was none to restrain them. End of Ether, chapters 10 through 13. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Ether, chapters 14 through 15, and Moroni, chapters 1 through 7 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Ether, chapters 14 through 15, and Moroni, chapters 1 through 7. Ether, chapter 14. And now there began to be a great curse upon all the land, because of the iniquity of the people, in which if a man should lay his tool or his sword upon his shelf or upon the place whither he would keep it behold upon the morrow he could not find it so great was the curse upon the land wherefore every man did cleave unto that which was his own with his hands and would not borrow neither would he lend and every man kept the hilt of his sword in his right hand in the defence of his property and his own life and of his wives and children and now, after the space of two years, and after the death of Sherod, behold, there arose the brother of Sherod, and he gave battle unto Coriantumr, in which Coriantumr did beat him, and did pursue him to the wilderness of Achish. And it came to pass that the brother of Sherod did give battle unto him in the wilderness of Achish, and the battle became exceedingly sore, and many thousands fell by the sword. And it came to pass that Coriantumr did lay siege to the wilderness, and the brother of Sherod did march forth out of the wilderness by night, and slew a part of the army of Coriantumr as they were drunken. And he came forth to the land of Moran, and placed himself upon the throne of Coriantumr. And it came to pass that Coriantumr dwelt with his army in the wilderness for the space of two years, in which he did receive great strength to his army. Now the brother of Sherod, whose name was Gilead, also received great strength to his army, because of secret combinations. And it came to pass that his high priest murdered him as he sat upon his throne. And it came to pass that one of the secret combinations murdered him in a secret pass, and obtained unto himself the kingdom. And his name was Lib. And Lib was a man of great stature, more than any other man among all the people. And it came to pass that in the first year of Lib, Coriantumr came up unto the land of Moran, and gave battle unto Lib. And it came to pass that he fought with Lib, in which Lib did smite upon his arm that he was wounded. Nevertheless the army of Coriantumr did press forward upon Lib, that he fled to the borders upon the seashore. And it came to pass that Coriantumr pursued him, and Lib gave battle unto him upon the seashore. And it came to pass that Lib did smite the army of Coriantumr, that they fled again to the wilderness of Achish. And it came to pass that Lib did pursue him until he came to the plains of Agosh. And Coriantumr had taken all the people with him as he fled before Lib in that quarter of the land whither he fled. And when he had come to the plains of Agosh, he gave battle unto Lib, and he smote upon him until he died. Nevertheless, the brother of Lib did come against Coriantumr in the stead thereof, and the battle became exceedingly sore, in the which Coriantumr fled again before the army of the brother of Lib. 
Now the name of the brother of Lib was called Shiz, and it came to pass that Shiz pursued after Coriantumr, and he did overthrow many cities, and he did slay both women and children, and he did burn the cities. And there went a fear of Shiz throughout all the land, yea, a cry went forth throughout the land, Who can stand before the army of Shiz? Behold, he sweepeth the earth before him. And it came to pass that the people began to flock together in armies throughout all the face of the land, and they were divided. And a part of them fled to the army of Shiz, and a part of them fled to the army of Coriantumr. And so great and lasting had been the war, and so long had been the scene of bloodshed and carnage, that the whole face of the land was covered with the bodies of the dead. And so swift and speedy was the war, that there was none left to bury the dead, but they did march forth from the shedding of blood to the shedding of blood, leaving the bodies of both men, women, and children, strewn upon the face of the land to become a prey to the worms of the flesh. And the scent thereof went forth upon the face of the land, even upon all the face of the land, wherefore the people became troubled by day and by night because of the scent thereof. Nevertheless, Shiz did not cease to pursue Coriantumr, for he had sworn to avenge himself upon Coriantumr of the blood of his brother, who had been slain, and the word of the Lord which came to Ether that Coriantumr should not fall by the sword. And thus we see that the Lord did visit them in the fullness of his wrath, and their wickedness and abominations had prepared a way for their everlasting destruction. And it came to pass that Shiz did pursue Coriantumr eastward, even to the borders by the seashore, and there he gave battle unto Shiz for the space of three days. And so terrible was the destruction among the armies of Shiz that the people began to be frightened, and began to flee before the armies of Coriantumr, and they fled to the land of Korahor, and swept off the inhabitants before them, all them that would not join them. And they pitched their tents in the valley of Korahor, and Coriantumr pitched his tents in the valley of Sher. Now the valley of Sher was near the hill Comnor. Wherefore Coriantumr did gather his armies together upon the hill Comnor, and did sound a trumpet unto the armies of Shiz, to invite them forth to battle. And it came to pass that they came forth, but were driven again. And they came the second time, and they were driven again the second time, and it came to pass that they came again the third time, and the battle became exceedingly sore. And it came to pass that Shiz smote upon Coriantumr that he gave him many deep wounds, and Coriantumr, having lost his blood, fainted, and was carried away as though he were dead. Now the loss of men, women, and children on both sides was so great that Shiz commanded his people that they should not pursue the armies of Coriantumr, Wherefore they returned to their camp. Ether chapter 15 And it came to pass, when Coriantumr had recovered of his wounds, he began to remember the words which Ether had spoken unto him. He saw that there had been slain by the sword already nearly two millions of his people. And he began to sorrow in his heart. Yea, there had been slain two millions of the mighty men, and also their wives and their children. He began to repent of the evil which he had done. He began to remember the words which had been spoken by the mouth of all the prophets, and he saw them that they were fulfilled thus far every whit, and his soul mourned and refused to be comforted. And it came to pass that he wrote an epistle unto Shiz, desiring him that he would spare the people, and he would give up the kingdom for the sake of the lives of the people. And it came to pass that when Shiz had received his epistle, he wrote an epistle unto Coriantumr, that if he would give himself up, that he might slay him with his own sword, that he would spare the lives of the people. And it came to pass that the people repented not of their iniquity, and the people of Coriantumr were stirred up to anger against the people of Shiz, and the people of Shiz were stirred up to anger against the people of Coriantumr, wherefore the people of Shiz did give battle unto the people of Coriantumr. And when Coriantumr saw that he was about to fall, he fled again before the people of Shiz. And it came to pass that he came to the waters of Ripliancum, which by interpretation is large, or to exceed all. 
Wherefore, when he came to these waters, they pitched their tents, and Shiz also pitched his tents near unto them, and therefore on the morrow they did come to battle. And it came to pass that they fought an exceedingly sore battle, in which Coriantumr was wounded again, and he fainted with the loss of blood. And it came to pass that the armies of Coriantumr did press upon the armies of Shiz, that they beat them, that they caused them to flee before them, and they did flee southward, and did pitch their tents in a place which was called Ogath. And it came to pass that the army of Coriantumr did pitch their tents by the hill Rama. And it was that same hill where my father Mormon did hide up the records unto the Lord which were sacred. And it came to pass that they did gather together all the people upon all the face of the land who had not been slain, save it was Ether. And it came to pass that Ether did behold all the doings of the people, and he beheld that the people who were for Coriantumr were gathered together to the army of Coriantumr, and the people who were for Shiz were gathered together to the army of Shiz. Wherefore they were for the space of four years gathering together the people, that they might get all who were upon the face of the land, and that they might receive all the strength which it was possible that they could receive. And it came to pass that when they were all gathered together, every one to the army which he would, with their wives and their children, both men, women, and children, being armed with weapons of war, having shields and breastplates and headplates, and being clothed after the manner of war, they did march forth one against another to battle. And they fought all that day, and conquered not. And it came to pass that when it was night they were weary, and retired to their camps. And after they had retired to their camps they took up a howling and a lamentation for the loss of the slain of their people. And so great were their cries, their howlings and lamentations, that they did rend the air exceedingly. And it came to pass that on the morrow they did go again to battle, and great and terrible was that day. Nevertheless they conquered not. And when the night came again they did rend the air with their cries, and their howlings and their mournings for the loss of the slain of their people. And it came to pass that Coriantumr wrote again an epistle unto Shiz, desiring that he would not come again to battle, but that he would take the kingdom and spare the lives of the people. And behold, the Spirit of the Lord had ceased striving with them, and Satan had full power over the hearts of the people, for they were given up unto the hardness of their hearts and the blindness of their minds, that they might be destroyed. Wherefore they went again to battle. And it came to pass that they fought all that day, and when the night came they slept upon their swords, and on the morrow they fought even until the night came. And when the night came they were drunken with anger, even as a man who was drunken with wine, and they slept again upon their swords. And on the morrow they fought again. And when the night came they had all fallen by the sword, save it were fifty and two of the people of Coriantumr, and sixty and nine of the people of Shiz. And it came to pass that they slept upon their swords that night, and on the morrow they fought again. And they contended in their might with their swords and with their shields all that day. And when the night came, there were thirty and two of the people of Shiz, and twenty and seven of the people of Coriantumr. And it came to pass that they ate and slept and prepared for death on the morrow. And they were large and mighty men as to the strength of men. And it came to pass that they fought for the space of three hours and they fainted with the loss of blood. And it came to pass, that when the men of Coriantumr had received sufficient strength that they could walk, they were about to flee for their lives. But behold, Shiz arose, and also his men, and he swore in his wrath that he would slay Coriantumr, or he would perish by the sword. Wherefore he did pursue them, and on the morrow he did overtake them, and they fought again with the sword, and it came to pass that when they had all fallen by the sword, save it were Coriantumr and Shiz, behold, Shiz had fainted with the loss of blood. And it came to pass that when Coriantumr had leaned upon his sword, that he rested a little, he smote off the head of Shiz. And it came to pass that after he had smitten off the head of Shiz, that Shiz raised upon his hands and fell. And after that he had struggled for breath, he died. And it came to pass that Coriantumr fell to the earth, and became as if he had no life. And the Lord spake unto Ether, and said unto him, Go forth. And he went forth, and beheld that the words of the Lord had all been fulfilled, and he finished his record.
and the hundredth part I have not written. And he hid them in a manner that the people of Limhi did find them. Now the last words which are written by Ether are these, Whether the Lord will suffer that I be translated, or that I suffer the will of the Lord in the flesh, it mattereth not, if it so be that I am saved in the kingdom of God. Amen. Moroni chapter 1 Now I, Moroni, after having made an end of abridging the account of the people of Jared, I had supposed not to have written more, but I have not as yet perished, and I make not myself known to the Lamanites, lest they should destroy me. For behold, their wars are exceedingly fierce among themselves, and because of their hatred they put to death every Nephite that will not deny the Christ. And I, Moroni, will not deny the Christ. Wherefore, I wander whithersoever I can for the safety of mine own life. Wherefore, I write a few more things, contrary to that which I had supposed, for I had supposed not to have written any more. But I write a few more things, that perhaps they may be of worth unto my brethren the Lamanites in some future day, according to the will of the Lord. Moroni chapter 2 The words of Christ which he spake unto his disciples, the twelve whom he had chosen, as he laid his hands upon them. And he called them by name, saying, Ye shall call on the Father in my name, in mighty prayer, and after ye have done this ye shall have power that to him upon whom ye shall lay your hands ye shall give the Holy Ghost, and in my name shall ye give it, for thus do mine apostles. Now Christ spake these words unto them at the time of his first appearing, and the multitude heard it not, but the disciples heard it, and on as many as they laid their hands fell the Holy Ghost. Moroni chapter 3 the manner which the disciples, who were called the elders of the church, ordained priests and teachers. After they had prayed unto the Father in the name of Christ, they laid their hands upon them, and said, In the name of Jesus Christ, I ordain you to be a priest, or, if he be a teacher, I ordain you to be a teacher, to preach repentance and remission of sins through Jesus Christ by the endurance of faith on his name to the end. Amen. And after this manner did they ordain priests and teachers, according to the gifts and callings of God unto men. And they ordained them by the power of the Holy Ghost, which was in them. Moroni chapter 4 The manner of their elders and priests administering the flesh and blood of Christ unto the church. And they administered it according to the commandments of Christ. Wherefore, we know the manner to be true and the elder or priest did minister it. And they did kneel down with the church, and pray to the Father in the name of Christ, saying, O God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee, in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of Thy Son, and witness unto Thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments which he hath given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. Moroni chapter 5 The manner of administering the wine, behold, they took the cup, and said, O God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do it in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. Moroni chapter 6 and now I speak concerning baptism. Behold, elders, priests, and teachers were baptized, and they were not baptized, save they brought forth fruit, meat, that they were worthy of it. Neither did they receive any unto baptism, save they came forth with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, and witnessed unto the church that they truly repented of all their sins. 
and none were received unto baptism, save they took upon them the name of Christ, having a determination to serve him to the end. And after they had been received unto baptism, and were wrought upon and cleansed by the power of the Holy Ghost, they were numbered among the people of the church of Christ, and their names were taken, that they might be remembered and nourished by the good word of God, to keep them in the right way, to keep them continually watchful unto prayer, relying alone upon the merits of Christ, who was the author and the finisher of their faith. And the church did meet together oft, to fast and to pray, and to speak one with another concerning the welfare of their souls. And they did meet together oft, to partake of bread and wine, in remembrance of the Lord Jesus. And they were strict to observe that there should be no iniquity among them. And whoso was found to commit iniquity, and three witnesses of the church did condemn them before the elders. And if they repented not, and confessed not, their names were blotted out, and they were not numbered among the people of Christ. But as oft as they repented, and sought forgiveness with real intent, they were forgiven. And their meetings were conducted by the church, after the manner of the workings of the Spirit, and by the power of the Holy Ghost. For as the power of the Holy Ghost led them, whether to preach, or to exhort, or to pray, or to supplicate, or to sing, even so it was done. Moroni chapter 7 And now I, Moroni, write a few of the words of my father Mormon, which he spake concerning faith, hope, and charity. For after this manner did he speak unto the people as he taught them in the synagogue which they had built for the place of worship. And now I, Mormon, speak unto you, my beloved brethren. And it is by the grace of God the Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ and his holy will, because of the gift of his calling unto me, that I am permitted to speak unto you at this time. Wherefore, I would speak unto you that are of the church, that are the peaceable followers of Christ, and that have obtained a sufficient hope by which ye can enter into the rest of the Lord, from this time henceforth until ye shall rest with him in heaven. And now, my brethren, I judge these things of you, because of your peaceable walk with the children of men. For I remember the word of God, which saith by their works, Ye shall know them, for if their works be good, then they are good also. For behold, God hath said, A man being evil cannot do that which is good. For if he offereth a gift, or prayeth unto God, except he shall do it with real intent, it profiteth him nothing. For behold, it is not counted unto him for righteousness. For behold, if a man being evil giveth a gift, he doeth it grudgingly. Wherefore it is counted unto him the same as if he had retained the gift, wherefore he is counted evil before God. And likewise also it is counted evil unto man, if he shall pray and not with real intent of heart. Yea, and it profiteth him nothing, for God receiveth none such. Wherefore a man being evil cannot do that which is good, neither will he give a good gift. For behold, a bitter fountain cannot bring forth good water neither can a good fountain bring forth bitter water. Wherefore, a man being a servant of the devil cannot follow Christ, and if he follow Christ, he cannot be a servant of the devil. Wherefore, all things which are good cometh of God, and that which is evil cometh of the devil. For the devil is an enemy unto God, and fighteth against him continually, and inviteth and enticeth to sin, and to do that which is evil continually. But, behold, that which is of God inviteth and enticeth to do good continually. Wherefore, everything which inviteth and enticeth to do good, and to love God, and to serve him, is inspired of God. Wherefore, take heed, my beloved brethren, that ye do not judge that which is evil to be of God, or that which is good and of God to be of the devil. For, behold, my brethren, it is given unto you to judge, that ye may know good from evil, and the way to judge is as plain that ye may know with a perfect knowledge as the daylight is from the dark night. For behold, the Spirit of Christ is given to every man, that he may know good from evil. Wherefore I show unto you the way to judge, for everything which invite us to do good, and to persuade to believe in Christ, is sent forth by the power and gift of Christ. Wherefore ye may know with a perfect knowledge it is of God, 
but whatsoever thing persuadeth man to do evil and believe not in christ and deny him and serve not god then ye may know with a perfect knowledge it is of the devil for after this manner doth the devil work for he persuadeth no man to do good no not one neither do his angels neither do they who subject themselves unto him and now my brethren seeing that ye know the light by which ye may judge which light is the light of christ see that ye do not judge wrongfully for with that same judgment which ye judge ye shall also be judged wherefore i beseech of you brethren that ye should search diligently in the light of christ that ye may know good from evil and if ye will lay hold upon every good thing and condemn it not ye certainly will be a child of christ and now my brethren how is it possible that ye can lay hold upon every good thing and now i come to that faith of which i said i would speak and i will tell you the way whereby ye may lay hold on every good thing for behold god knoweth all things being from everlasting to everlasting behold he sent angels to minister unto the children of men to make manifest concerning the coming of christ and in christ there should come every good thing and god also declareth unto prophets by his own mouth that christ should come and behold there were diverse ways that he did manifest things unto the children of men which were good and all things which are good cometh of christ otherwise men were fallen and there could no good thing come unto them wherefore by the ministering of angels and by every word which proceedeth forth out of the mouth of god men began to exercise faith in christ and thus by faith they did lay hold upon every good thing and thus it was until the coming of christ and after that he came men also were saved by faith in his name and by faith they become the sons of god and as sure as christ liveth he spake these words unto our fathers saying whatsoever thing ye shall ask the father in my name which is good in faith believing that ye shall receive behold it shall be done unto you wherefore my beloved brethren have miracles ceased because christ hath ascended into heaven and hath sat down on the right hand of god to claim of the father his rights of mercy which he hath upon the children of men for he hath answered the ends of the law and he claimeth all those who have faith in him and they who have faith in him will cleave unto every good thing wherefore he advocateth the cause of the children of men and he dwelleth eternally in the heavens and because he has done this my beloved brethren have miracles ceased behold i say unto you nay neither have angels ceased to minister unto the children of men for behold they are subject unto him to minister according to the word of his command showing themselves unto them of strong faith and a firm mind in every form of godliness and the office of their ministry is to call men unto repentance and to fulfill and to do the work of the covenants of the father which he hath made unto the children of men to prepare the way among the children of men by declaring the word of christ unto the chosen vessels of the lord that they may bear testimony of him and by so doing the lord god prepareth the way that the residue of men may have faith in christ that the holy ghost may have place in their hearts according to the power thereof and after this manner bringeth to pass the father the covenants which he hath made unto the children of men and christ hath said if ye will have faith in me ye shall have power to do whatsoever thing is expedient in me and he hath said repent all ye ends of the earth and come unto me and be baptized in my name and have faith in me that ye may be saved and now my beloved brethren if this be the case that these things are true which i have spoken unto you and god will show unto you with power and great glory at the last day that they are true and if they are true has the day of miracles ceased or have angels ceased to appear unto the children of men or has he withheld the power of the holy ghost from them or will he so long as time shall last or the earth shall stand or there shall be one man upon the face thereof to be saved behold i say unto you nay for it is by faith that miracles are wrought and it is by faith that angels appear and minister unto men 
Wherefore, if these things have ceased, woe be unto the children of men. For it is because of unbelief, and all is vain. For no man can be saved according to the words of Christ, save they shall have faith in his name. Wherefore, if these things have ceased, then has faith ceased also, and awful is the state of man, for they are as though there had been no redemption made. But behold, my beloved brethren, I judge better things of you, for I judge that ye have faith in Christ because of your meekness. For if ye have not faith in him, then ye are not fit to be numbered among the people of his church. And again, my beloved brethren, I would speak unto you concerning hope. How is it that ye can attain unto faith, save ye shall have hope? And what is it ye shall hope for? Behold, I say unto you, that ye shall have hope through the atonement of Christ and the power of his resurrection, to be raised unto life eternal, and this because of your faith in him according to the promise. Wherefore, if a man have faith, he must needs have hope, for without faith there cannot be any hope. And again, behold, I say unto you, that he cannot have faith and hope, save he shall be meek and lowly of heart. If so, his faith and hope is vain, for none is acceptable before God save the meek and lowly in heart. And if a man be meek and lowly in heart, and confesses by the power of the Holy Ghost that Jesus is the Christ, he must needs have charity. For if he have not charity, he is nothing. Wherefore, he must needs have charity. For charity suffereth long, and is kind, and envieth not, and is not puffed up, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, and rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, if ye have not charity, ye are nothing, for charity never faileth. Wherefore, cleave unto charity, which is the greatest of all, for all things must fail. But charity is the pure love of Christ, and it endureth for ever. And whoso is found possessed of it at the last day, it shall be well with him. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, pray unto the Father with all the energy of heart, that ye may be filled with this love, which he hath bestowed upon all who are true followers of his Son, Jesus Christ, that ye may become the sons of God that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is, that we may have this hope, that we may be purified even as he is pure. Amen. End of Ether, chapters 14 through 15, and Moroni, chapters 1 through 7. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Moroni, chapters 8 through 10 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Andrew White. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Moroni, chapter 8. An Epistle of My Father Mormon, written to me, Moroni and it was written unto me soon after my calling to the ministry. And on this wise did he write unto me, saying, My beloved son Moroni, I rejoice exceedingly that your Lord Jesus Christ hath been mindful of you, and hath called you to his ministry, and to his holy work. I am mindful of you always in my prayers, continually praying unto God the Father, in the name of his holy child, Jesus, that he, through his infinite goodness and grace, will keep you through the endurance of faith on his name to the end. And now, my son, I speak unto you concerning that which grieveth me exceedingly. For it grieveth me that there should be disputations rise among you. For if I have learned the truth, there have been disputations among you concerning the baptism of your little children. And now, my son, I desire that ye should labor diligently, that this gross error should be removed from among you, for, for this intent, 
I have written this epistle. For immediately after I had learned these things of you, I inquired of the Lord concerning the matter. And the word of the Lord came to me by the power of the Holy Ghost, saying, Listen to the words of Christ, your Redeemer, your Lord, and your God. Behold, I came into the world not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. The whole need no physician, but they that are sick. Wherefore, little children are whole, for they are not capable of committing sin. Wherefore, the curse of Adam is taken from them in me, that it hath no power over them, and the law of circumcision is done away in me. And after this manner did the Holy Ghost manifest the word of God unto me. Wherefore, my beloved son, I know that it is solemn mockery before God, that ye should baptize little children. Behold, I say unto you, that this thing shall ye teach, repentance and baptism, unto those who are accountable and capable of committing sin. Yea, teach parents that they must repent and be baptized, and humble themselves as their little children, and they shall all be saved with their little children and their little children need no repentance, neither baptism. Behold, baptism is unto repentance, to the fulfilling the commandments, unto the remission of sins. But little children are alive in Christ, even from the foundation of the world. If not so, God is a partial God, and also a changeable God, and a respecter to persons. For how many little children have died without baptism? Wherefore, if little children could not be saved without baptism, these must have gone to an endless hell. Behold, I say unto you, that he that supposeth that little children need baptism is in the gall of bitterness and in the bonds of iniquity, for he hath neither faith, hope, nor charity. Wherefore, should he be cut off while in the thought, he must go down to hell. For awful is the wickedness to suppose that God saveth one child because of baptism, and the other must perish, because he hath no baptism. Woe be unto them that shall pervert the ways of the Lord after this manner, for they shall perish except they repent. Behold, I speak with boldness, having authority from God, and I fear not what man can do, for perfect love casteth out all fear." and I am filled with charity, which is everlasting love. Wherefore all children are alike unto me. Wherefore I love little children with a perfect love, and they are all alike and partakers of salvation. For I know that God is not a partial God, neither a changeable being, but he is unchangeable from all eternity to all eternity. Little children cannot repent, Wherefore it is awful wickedness to deny the pure mercies of God unto them, for they are all alive in him because of his mercy. And he that saith that little children need baptism, denieth the mercies of Christ, and setteth at naught the atonement of him, and the power of his redemption. Woe unto such, for they are in danger of death, hell, and an endless torment. I speak it boldly, God hath commanded me, Listen unto them, and give heed, or they stand against you at the judgment seat of Christ. For behold, that all little children are alive in Christ, and also all they that are without the law. For the power of redemption cometh on all them that have no law. Wherefore he that is not condemned, or he that is under no condemnation, cannot repent, and unto such baptism availeth nothing. But it is mockery before God denying the mercies of Christ, and the power of his Holy Spirit, and putting trust in dead works. Behold, my son, this thing ought not to be, for repentance is unto them that are under condemnation, and under the curse of a broken law. And the first fruits of repentance is baptism, and baptism cometh by faith unto the fulfilling the commandments, and the fulfilling the commandments bringeth remission of sins and the remission of sins bringeth meekness and lowliness of heart. And because of meekness and lowliness of heart cometh the visitation of the Holy Ghost, which comforter filleth with hope and perfect love, which love endureth by diligence unto prayer, until the end shall come, when all the saints shall dwell with God. Behold, my son, 
I will write unto you again if I go not out soon against the Lamanites. Behold, the pride of this nation, or the people of the Nephites, hath proven their destruction, except they should repent. Pray for them, my son, that repentance may come unto them. But behold, I fear, lest the Spirit hath ceased striving with them, and in this part of the land they are also seeking to put down all power and authority which cometh from God, and they are denying the Holy Ghost. And after rejecting so great a knowledge, my son, they must perish soon, unto the fulfilling of the prophecies which were spoken by the prophets, as well as the words of our Saviour himself. Farewell, my son, until I shall write unto you, or shall meet you again. Amen. Moroni chapter 9 My beloved son, I write unto you again that ye may know that I am yet alive, but I write somewhat of that which is grievous. For behold, I have had a sore battle with the Lamanites, in which we did not conquer, and Archeantus has fallen by the sword, and also Loram and Emron, yea, and we have lost a great number of our choice men. And now behold, my son, I fear lest the Lamanites shall destroy this people, for they do not repent, and Satan stirreth them up continually to anger one with another. Behold, I am laboring with them continually, and when I speak the word of God with sharpness, they tremble in anger against me, and when I use no sharpness, they harden their hearts against it. Wherefore I fear lest the Spirit of the Lord hath ceased striving with them. For so exceedingly do they anger, that it seemeth me that they have no fear of death, and they have lost their love one towards another, and they thirst after blood and revenge continually. And now, my beloved son, notwithstanding their hardness, let us labor diligently, for if we should cease to labor, we should be brought under condemnation, for we have a labor to perform whilst in this tabernacle of clay, that we may conquer the enemy of all righteousness, and rest our souls in the kingdom of God. And now I write somewhat concerning the sufferings of this people, for according to the knowledge which I have received from Amaron, behold, the Lamanites have many prisoners, which they took from the tower of Shariza, and there were men, women, and children and the husbands and fathers of those women and children they have slain, and they feed the women upon the flesh of their husbands, and the children upon the flesh of their fathers, and no water, save a little, do they give unto them. And notwithstanding this great abomination of the Lamanites, it doth not exceed that of our people in Moriantum, for behold, many of the daughters of the Lamanites have they taken prisoners, and after depriving them of that which was most dear and precious above all things, which is chastity and virtue. And after they had done this thing, they did murder them in a most cruel manner, torturing their bodies even unto death. And after they have done this, they devour their flesh like unto wild beasts, because of the hardness of their hearts, and they do it for a token of bravery. O oh, my beloved son, how can a people like this, that are without civilization? And only a few years have passed away, and they were a civil and a delightsome people. But, O oh, my son, how can a people like this, whose delight is in so much abomination, how can we expect that God will stay his hand in judgment against us? Behold, my heart cries, Woe unto this people! Come out in judgment, O God, and hide their sins and wickedness and abominations from before thy face. And again, my son, there are many widows and their daughters who remain in Shariza, and that part of the provisions which the Lamanites did not carry away, behold, the army of Xenophi has carried away, and left them to wander whithersoever they can for food. And many old women do faint by the way, and die. And the army which is with me is weak, and the armies of the Lamanites are betwixt Shariza and me, and as many as have fled to the army of Aaron have fallen victims to their awful brutality. O oh, the depravity of my people! They are without order and without mercy. Behold, I am but a man, and I have but the strength of a man, and I cannot any longer enforce my commands. 
and they have become strong in their perversion, and they are alike brutal, sparing none, neither old nor young, and they delight in everything save that which is good, and the suffering of our women and our children upon all the face of this land doth exceed everything, yea, tongue cannot tell, neither can it be written. And now, my son, I dwell no longer upon this horrible scene. Behold, thou knowest the wickedness of this people. Thou knowest that they are without principle and past feeling, and their wickedness doth exceed that of the Lamanites. Behold, my son, I cannot recommend them unto God, lest he should smite me. But behold, my son, I recommend thee unto God, and I trust in Christ that thou wilt be saved, and I pray unto God that he will spare thy life to witness the return of his people unto him, or their utter destruction, for I know that they must perish, except they repent and return unto him. And if they perish, it will be like unto the Jaredites, because of the willfulness of their hearts, seeking for blood and revenge. And if it so be that they perish, we know that many of our brethren have deserted over unto the Lamanites, and many more will also desert over unto them. Wherefore, write somewhat a few things, if thou art spared, and I shall perish and not see thee. But I trust that I may see thee soon, for I have sacred records that I would deliver up unto thee. My son, be faithful in Christ, and may not the things which I have written grieve thee, to weigh thee down unto death, but may Christ lift thee up, and may his sufferings and death and the showing his body unto our fathers, and his mercy and long-suffering, and the hope of his glory and of eternal life, rest in your mind for ever. And may the grace of God the Father, whose throne is high in the heavens, and our Lord Jesus Christ, who sitteth on the right hand of his power, until all things shall become subject unto him, be and abide with you for ever. Amen. Moroni chapter 10 now I, Moroni, write somewhat as seemeth me good, and I write unto my brethren the Lamanites. And I would that they should know that more than four hundred and twenty years have passed away since the sign was given of the coming of Christ. And I seal up these records, after I have spoken a few words by way of exhortation unto you. Behold, I would exhort you, that when ye shall read these things, if it be wisdom in God that ye should read them, that ye would remember how merciful the Lord hath been unto the children of men, from the creation of Adam even down unto the time that ye shall receive these things, and ponder it in your hearts. And when ye shall receive these things, I would exhort you that ye would ask God, the Eternal Father, in the name of Christ, if these things are not true. And if ye shall ask with a sincere heart, with real intent, having faith in Christ, he will manifest the truth of it unto you by the power of the Holy Ghost. And by the power of the Holy Ghost ye may know the truth of all things. And whatsoever thing is good is just and true. Wherefore nothing that is good denieth the Christ, but acknowledgeth that he is. And ye may know that he is by the power of the Holy Ghost. Wherefore I would exhort you that ye deny not the power of God, for he worketh by power, according to the faith of the children of men, the same to-day, and to-morrow, and for ever. And again I exhort you, my brethren, that ye deny not the gifts of God, for they are many, and they come from the same God, and there are different ways that these gifts are administered, but it is the same God who worketh all in all, and they are given by the manifestations of the Spirit of God unto men, to profit them. For behold, to one is given by the Spirit of God, that he may teach the word of wisdom, and to another, that he may teach the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, and to another, exceedingly great faith, and to another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, and again to another, that he may work mighty miracles, and again to another, that he may prophesy concerning all things, and again to another, the beholding of angels and ministering spirits, and again to another, all kinds of tongues. 
and again to another the interpretation of languages and of diverse kinds of tongues and all these gifts come by the spirit of christ and they come unto every man severally according as he will and i would exhort you my beloved brethren that ye remember that every good gift cometh of christ and i would exhort you my beloved brethren that ye remember that he is the same yesterday to-day and for ever and that all these gifts of which i have spoken which are spiritual never will be done away even as long as the world shall stand only according to the unbelief of the children of men wherefore there must be faith and if there must be faith there must also be hope and if there must be hope there must also be charity and except ye have charity ye can in no wise be saved in the kingdom of god neither can ye be saved in the kingdom of god if ye have not faith neither can ye if ye have no hope and if ye have no hope ye must needs be in despair and despair cometh because of iniquity and christ truly said unto our fathers if ye have faith ye can do all things which are expedient unto me and now i speak unto all the ends of the earth that if the day cometh that the power and gifts of god shall be done away among you it shall be because of unbelief and woe be unto the children of men if this be the case for there shall be none that doeth good among you no not one for if there be one among you that doeth good he shall work by the power and gifts of god and woe unto them who shall do these things away and die for they die in their sins and they cannot be saved in the kingdom of god and i speak it according to the words of christ and i lie not and i exhort you to remember these things for the time speedily cometh that ye shall know that i lie not for ye shall see me at the bar of god and the lord god will say unto you did i not declare my words unto you which were written by this man like as one crying from the dead yea even as one speaking out of the dust i declare these things unto the fulfilling of the prophecies and behold they shall proceed forth out of the mouth of the everlasting god and his word shall hiss forth from generation to generation and god shall show unto you that that which i have written is true and again i would exhort you that ye would come unto christ and lay hold upon every good gift and touch not the evil gift nor the unclean thing and awake and arise from the dust o jerusalem yea and put on thy beautiful garments o daughter of zion and strengthen thy stakes and enlarge thy borders for ever that thou mayest no more be confounded that the covenants of the eternal father which he hath made unto thee o house of israel may be fulfilled yea come unto christ and be perfected in him and deny yourselves of all ungodliness and if ye shall deny yourselves of all ungodliness and love god with all your might mind and strength then is his grace sufficient for you that by his grace ye may be perfect in christ and if by the grace of god ye are perfect in christ ye can in no wise deny the power of god and again if ye by the grace of god are perfect in christ and deny not his power then are ye sanctified in christ by the grace of god through the shedding of the blood of christ which is in the covenant of the father unto the remission of your sins that ye become holy without spot and now i bid unto all farewell i soon go to rest in the paradise of god until my spirit and body shall again reunite and i am brought forth triumphant through the air to meet you before the pleasing bar of the great jehovah the eternal judge of both quick and dead amen end of moroni chapters eight through ten recording by andrew white andrew white u s a at yahoo dot com end of the book of mormon translated by joseph smith